lights go out, and I'm looking back on everything I lost, trying to figure out what this life's about, about, doubt hits hard like a 12 gauge, stuck in the muck of my old ways, just trying to get lost in the moment and forget about the paper, cause the path is like a damn cage, be a man that stand with the time right, be you, be true in the limelight, but my thoughts are lost with these shots, so I can still shot by the view with my hindsight, walk the tall through hell so steady, still living cause hell wasn't ready, everything in my past so heavy, so you know I stay high like a jacked up Chevy, nothing better than finally let it go, and I was born and drifted so right, right. Little whiskey, and an open road, riding through the night, chasing another sun. Drinks go round, and I'm thinking back on everything I lost. A view from up top and bad looking down. Another day, another state line. I'm doing like the devil trying to take man. Living life for a city at a time, just tipping back that moonshine. Cause the pain's so constant, but enough is enough with the nonsense. All the women and the drugs and the violence. Looking like I'm making one tons on my conscience. So I put it in a bag of bones, and with the real stop rolling, I'm back at home. This stop. Put the pedal to the metal with the wicked pin the motor, and then I'm gone. There's nothing better than finally letting go. Mine and I was born and drifted so right. A little whiskey and an open road, riding through the night, chasing another sun. i 
the fire. Don't put your trouble on me. Got enough for that. I'm trying to get this thing active and rolling here. I got to get that music fixed. That 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 is definitely not sounding what I want it to sound. I'm making some changes here. Uh, some stuff you might, might uh, want to hear, you might want to be a part of. So give me one second here to start this bass one. Uh, I, let's do, what do you think? We'll do uh, transparency for trans drivers. You think that'll do it? You think that'll bring people in? Will that upset people? Let's see. I don't know. Let's see. Uh, do I invite anybody? Let's see what happens. Let's see if I invite somebody. Oh, I think I got my mic working on that. So that should be up and running. And let me go here and turn that on so you can see that. Ta. Uh, where's my phone? All right. Let me. Uh, oh, it's killing me. I hate when that happens. Let me go to spaces. Let me click on this. Let me activate Malgato. And then let me go back to my... Yeah, I got it. Let me go back to my phone. Wrong. Uh, and, and obviously, TJ finds that out all the time. With that, you know, he's rarely wrong. But I can drop this in the chat. Or I can put it on my ex... Oh, there's, there's Ryan. Actually, you're the one I wanted to have in here. Invite to speak. Uh, you're actually the one that uh, I wanted in here, so now you can speak. About time you come in here, because you never come in the show. I do all this stuff to try to get people in there, and you never show up, Ryan. What's your problem? What is your problem, Ryan? Why don't you show up? Go ahead. Oh. Is this thing not working? Of course it's not working. You can hear me, but why can't they hear you? Let me check something here. It is not coming through. Hang on. Let me do this real quick. Turn this on. Go to my active. Make sure that's connected. Kick back. Go back to my space. And now can they hear you? I got to get this set up. I got to get this set up in this space. Talk amongst yourselves here for a moment. Um... I'm going to also drop the link here um, so that people can jump in this link. So here's the thing about the, my link, just so everybody's fully aware. The link that I have out there uh, is always, always active. So if my show is active, it's always the same link. So if you come in on my show, you can always use the same link to come in, just so you know. So let me uh, drop this link real quick. I'll be right with you guys over there in the space. Um, let me copy this. Let me put this on a couple places right here. Let me put this on X. Uh, I'm just going to post it on X. This is the link to get into the show. Let me paste this. Save this link. Keep it someplace. Stick it in your pocket. Make sure you remember it because you can always jump in there on that link. And let me go over here and drop it over here. And just in case somebody wants to come in, paste now, uh, just so you're fully aware, if anybody jumps in, uh, nobody can hear you until it um, until I approve you for them to be able to hear you. So you can yell, you know, the N word or whatever you want all day long. I don't care. Nor does anybody else. So I want to talk a couple things here, uh, real quick. So one of the things that we got going on is I set up a bunch of stuff where um, I was on a, a show uh, yesterday, which was. Um, uh, Truckers Education Network, real good guy, uh, Jeff. We've gone back and forth on things. We argue on things and stuff like that. We disagree on some stuff, but when it comes down to it, um, I like Jeff. You know, I I, I like the, what he's doing with his career um, and things like that. But I'm gonna pull that up. But there's another guy named Dean, um, and I, I I've talked to Dean a couple times. He may or may not be listening. I'll see if I can get him on the phone. Um, but Dean is out of control. He's out of control. If you want to hear somebody, he's out of control. Let me pull this up here a little bit. Let me go to Jeff's live because it was a good show. Notify me up and coming. He's going to do one at 630. What the hell is this? Oh, no, that was one that he set forward. All right, let me do this. All right, let me do that. All right. All set. That's all set too now. So one of the things I want to talk about was I read the Overdrive article, which I'm going to show you. Where's my React button? What did you do with my React button? There it is. 
I read the Overdrive article from Alex Locke uh, in regards to Kevin uh, Rutherford at Matt's. And I kind of want to read this and I want to cover this because we, it, it, look, although I'm sitting in here in a bathrobe and people don't like, you know, some of the ways I say things, I do things. If you just listen to what I'm saying, maybe not how I say it sometimes, I'm not the most delicate person in the world. But if you listen to what I'm saying, I'm, I'm really starting to, prov I pr I'm providing a ton of information, right? I got a, lo a lot of stuff we're going to be doing. I'm going to be bringing on, my wife's going to start coming on the show because she wants to, that she's going to have a little, that's her little avatar. Um, she's not going to come on camera because I don't have a camera set up over there. But she'll come on with audio, right? And my wife, she's, she was a, 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 uh, an agent also at Landstar. She was in the truck with me when I was driving. She didn't drive. She had her permit. So she drove like you know on a permit, but she didn't have her own CDL uh, before we ended up doing the brokerage full time. All right, so here's one of the things I want to basically talk about. Also, if anybody, let me put this out here, quick advertising. If anybody's looking for factoring, I have a fantastic factoring deal with one of the best factoring companies out there, one of the largest factoring companies out there, and I've been with them for shit. I don't know. Uh, 14 years. I've been with them for 14 years. So, and they're good. And they, and, and they give you a fantastic rate with no ACH fees for both a broker and a carrier. So if you come over with your carrier and you eventually open up a brokerage or you, you can, you can still use them for factoring. And I suggest doing that because I use them for factoring and it, it's, that's the way it basically, I, I, they handle my invoices. Like for me, if you haul my freight, they guarantee payment to you, uh, either by quick pay, they handle all that, or by, in 21 days. So you're getting paid before I'm getting paid. So if something happens, they're coming after me. They're not coming after you. And that's just how I move my freight. And I, and I believe it's a, they give you a letter stating that it, it reinsures broker, you know, uh, carriers are going to get paid um, because you're going through a large factoring company and the, I suggest using them and reach out to me and 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 uh, shoot me an email, find me on on X and DM me and I'll get you hooked up with that. Also, if you have issues with them, call me because I can I've got phone numbers that I can get in faster than you can get in. Just so you know. All right, uh, that and we also have the coffee going on. Go to Content Creator Coffee. Um, we have my coffee and I'm going to be coming up with a new flavor, which you guys are going to find fantastic. Uh, but right now I've got the dark roast troll. That's one of my coffees. And I also have another content creator out there, Snorlord, and he has his, oh, who jumped in? Hang on. Adam jumped in. Hold on one second. Hey, right. uh. All right, I cannot hear anybody in the space right now. So I just ended that space. I'm going to try starting another one. I don't know why, um, but I will get this going because I actually wanted Adam to come on and basically just debate a guy because it would be it would be fantastic, Ryan. You'd have so much fun. He's a nice guy, but he's out there. All right. So let me dive into this real quick since I've already done my commercials for the coffee, which is mine. And there's another guy named Snorlord. You can try either of our coffees. I'm also going to be adding some other people to Content Creator Coffee. Um, and, and, and we're going to have a bunch of people on the – so what I'm doing with Content Creator Coffee is I have a website. And the website is set up for coffee. So I'm reaching out to different content creators and saying, hey, do you, do you want – to be on this you want your coffee to be on this and then they're also coughing and then so basically whatever the profits are that they make support some of the shows like it's help support some of the shows of the people that are putting out content that you know are, are providing a value to you guys and and although i do probably don't provide a value to some people um be, but I, I i'm definitely providing a value to a lot of people i believe i'm trying to help i'm trying to be that guy so let me go ahead and do this one more time with this damn space. I can't guarantee anything. Uh, Ryan, space. Let's try that. 
Let's start. Oh, I can hear it in my headphones. I think I got it. I can't. I think I can hear you in the space now because I can hear it in my earpiece when I was pushing the buttons. So we'll wait for that. All right. So here's one of the things I wanted to talk about with the uh, Kevin Rutherford, this article. And I'm going to read this one. And I thought it was interesting because I really, it, listen, so if you are with Internet Truck Stop or you're with somebody with mats, we need to talk. I, I want to do a video. You can bring me on the big screen. I can show you how to do it. I can interact with the people. I want to do a video from the den of the of the bathrobe freight broker in regards to answering some of these questions. Because I'll tell you, if I was there answering some of these broker transparency questions, it would change the entire world. I would break it down so you understand, right? Because I understand people want transparency and everything. But we're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about this, okay? So Kevin Rutherford's Matt's talk derailed by broker transparency argument. Well, I don't know if it got derailed. If this one statement derailed Kevin Rutherford, I don't think so. He's a pretty he's a pretty stable guy when it comes to getting his point across and teaching people. So I don't see it as a derailment, Mr. Alex. But we'll continue. In the Mid-American Truck Show saw no shortage of news from federal regulations and truck beauty contest winners. But under the surface lurked tensions between rival camps of owner-operators and the issue of broker transparency. Dum, dum, dum! The finally boiling over near the end of the talk delivered by trucking guru and past override contributor Kevin Rutherford. On one side of the broker transparency issue stands Rutherford, flanked by truck stop chief relationship officer Brett. I'm going to probably put your name. Sorry. Who do? I don't know. I'm hoping that's it. Uh, Rutherford at Matt's rebooted his long running certified master carrier program in a live format. For those who don't remember, it's the owner operator academy of sorts taking place over days with intense sessions aimed at delivering the ins and outs of bootstrapping a trucking business, no matter what the business or regulating uh, climate. Preaching a radical kind of personal ownership over all things business, Rutherford and his followers don't think brokers being forced to disclose their rates would really help the trucking industry and indeed warns that it could backfire on carriers, ushering in a race to the bottom on rates. On the other corner stands Dakota F Springfields, who chalked up a win when in November she was successfully with the FMCSA help in a bid to compel TQL to disclose the rate the shipper paid on the load of ice cream. It's always the ice cream, right? I mean, there's no way in, with, with somebody like Biden in charge, you're not going to find out exactly how much ice cream costs because ice cream is extremely important to the White House nowadays. So I could see that. All right, let me go on here. Uh, Springfield said that it exposed TQL making 44% margin on the load and that more transparency would reveal more well above average takes from intermediaries making an urgent action item for regulators. All right, let's, let's go over this real quick because I think we have a little problem understanding business. I think the problem is the actual business aspect of this. Now, I did call Spectre, and I was going to do this show with him because I thought he would be a huge help with this one. But he's busy, and that's okay. I can separate this one um, in a whole show with him, and I, we're going to talk about it. So let's talk about this 44% margin. Let's talk about that, all right? You, I pick up the phone. Where's my phone? What'd you do with my phone? All right, so I pick up the phone. You call me on the phone. Let's call a broker. Goddamn broker. This is why it's going to be easier when my wife's here, because she, she can play the role of whatever. Let's call a broker. Uh, what's his number? Uh, it's an 800 number. Son of a bitch. 
Do you guys remember these fucking phones? You had to do all this goddamn dialing? Oh, shit. I screwed up. I got to start over. Uh, anyways. Broker! I want to book that load. Yeah. How much you got in it? $1,500? Okay, I'll take it. Bastard! He's probably got $42,000 in that ice cream load, and he's only going to pay me $1,500. That's normally what you guys probably do when you hang the phone up. Now, I could be exaggerating a little bit on the numbers, but I doubt it. We're going to put the phone down there because it's in the way. So then I want to talk about this 44%. So here's one of the things I want you guys to understand. This is the business aspect of something, all right? So here's what kind of happens. When you look at 44%, what do you think that money's for? Like, let's say it's 50%, all right? So let's say I got a load that's paying $2,000, I pay you $1,000, and I keep 50, I keep 500, which would be 50%. Let's just say, simple numbers. Do you think that goes into my Lamborghini fund? Do you think that goes into my speedboat fund? My stripper pole fund. Like, wh where do you think that money, that, th that 50% goes? And I think the problem is, I know what the problem is, actually. Wh one of the problems is, is when you have a carrier, you have a trucking company, and you open up a business, you don't understand the business aspect of that. You are a business with a trucking company. All right? So what happens is, when it comes to the business, what do you think that 44% pays? Do you think that has, you're at TQL now, right? You're, you're getting this from TQL. The guy that's on the phone is probably paid by an hour, maybe some commission, but he's probably paid by the hour. So that 44% isn't all profit. It's not all profit. TQL is paying employees, W&I employees, they're paying insurance, they're paying payroll taxes, they're paying power, they're paying property taxes, they're paying the electric bill, they're paying the software, because each one of those people that's logged in and posting low, that shit costs money, bro. That costs money for everyone that's doing this, right? So let's say we take that 44%. That's not profit. That's not profit. Now, that also has to pay the salespeople that went out and, and, and the sales managers. It pays the office managers. It pays for the rugs and the chairs, the computers for in their office. Um, it pays for all this type of stuff for the business. Okay? So, because there's times that they're only getting a 4% markup. But maybe there's times they're getting a 60% markup. OK, but understand that if it's a four percent markup, that didn't pay for the electricity that they lost money on that because it didn't pay. Oh, finally, I don't know what the hell, where the hell you were. I don't know what you were doing. Let me do this uh, there. I think I got you now. That didn't pay that four percent markup didn't pay for the electricity. It didn't pay for the warehouse that they own. It didn't pay for the offices they own. It didn't even buy the free brokers coffee. It didn't even pay for the for the coffee from the bathrobe freight broker in their office to stay awake. It didn't pay for it. it so that 44 percent when you're looking at if they're going to take if they take something like that. Who paid the hourly wage for the guy to answer the phone? Who paid for the salesman to go out and make that sales call? Who paid for the office building? Who paid for the software? Who paid for the lights? Who paid for the taxes? And this is where when I hear people say things like, well, we're only going to give the broker 8%. Really? 8%? So if I'm running a business, I want to make a percent that I can grow my company. A lot of you truck drivers don't. So when you look at a freight brokerage and you look at another business, you look at, well, all businesses should be like me. But what if some of the profits you took that you make, not, not just paying yourself, after you're paying yourself, what is your profit margin? After you've paid yourself, your truck, your maintenance, and all your whatever you have, let's say you have a 10% profit on that. Well, what businesses do is something we called 
investing. Now you take that money and maybe you hire a salesman or you take that money and you open a brokerage. And then what you do is you take that money and you possibly hire somebody to go out and do sales calls on behalf of your brokerage and your trucking company. This is the aspect of things. Oh, Jesus. Ryan ducked out again. He's a pain in the ball sack. Ryan, you're a pain in the ball sack sometimes. All right. Oh, hang on. So I think a lot of times the, the issue that you guys are looking at in regards to the percentage that they're taking is because you have no idea what you're supposed to be doing with a business. You're, you're supposed to, your, your goal is not just to make it and sit. Your goal is to take some of that profit and invest it back into the company to help build a better business. Now, I got yelled at this yesterday all day by, by, by Dean, and I'm going to have Dean on, but I'm at a point where I'm kind of partially retired, right? So I'm not, but at one time, I had employees. I had W-9 employees. I had independent contractors. I had a carrier. I, I did $6 million or something. I can't have to pull the number. I did $6 million basically with me and a couple guys. I had a lot of customers. I'm down now to like, uh, let's say two consistent, and then two that when we do stuff, it's well, one, then we do stuff, it's high dollar, and then one's kind of random. But those two customers keep me, you know, I, I do about 60 loads. I'm moving a load right now for 70 grand. Well, we're not moving yet. We just submitted and, and we'll probably get approved tomorrow. But then again, we have to wait for the solar eclipse to end before they'll issue permits because the world's going to end. <sighs> Anyways, so when they, this 44%, the problem is, is you can't, the people that are looking at that can't look past the individual on the phone. Who paid for the phone? Who paid for the software? I'll say it again. Who paid for the salespeople? Who paid for the office? Who pays the taxes on the office? Who pays the electric bill? Who pays the people to come in and clean the office? Where does that money come from? So you, the problem is, is I see you guys only want to pay enough for me to survive. Well, he should be able to live on 8% and pay his bills. Well, I, I didn't open a business just to survive. You might have. That might be something you want to do and you don't want to grow, but that's not... Okay, he's coming in this way. Let me... I don't know what's going on. Can you hear me in the space, um, Anil? You, I, can't, I can't hear anything else. You can't hear anybody else. Anil, can you hear me? Yeah, they can hear me. All right, say something. You couldn't hear me when I was in there. Well, I started a new one. Anil, did you say something? I don't know. I've got a, I don't know why this space doesn't work. It's the same damn thing. Anyways, you're in here. Does this make sense to you? I mean, we're both. Am I? Am I explaining this right? Am I missing there, something there on this? That. Gross profit margin and not net profit margin. That's the problem. So gross profit is always just like your gross paycheck, right? Like the amount of money that you make before all your taxes and everything are taken out. It's not the same. So stop looking at the gross number and look at the net profit number. I mean, EQL has laid off a lot of people, you know, during this market. So, I mean, how are they, how are they making money? They need to make money. They're laying people off for a reason because they can't afford it. Right. And and I think right. they look at this 44% and they're just like, holy crap, he made 40, but he didn't make 44%. Somebody had to pay for the yeah. damn light bill. Uh, I mean, I don't know what, 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 uh, you know, like onboarding systems you use for your carriers, but like my carrier packets cost money. There's a monthly fee, you know, that, that goes nice. along with that. To pay for macro point for tracking, that costs money. To pay 
for, you know, the internet service, to pay for a load board subscription, to pay for your cell phone service or your, you know, whatever phone service you use, that costs money. You know, they think that you can buy a, a $200 Chromebook and be able to book freight. Here and, he is. And Go ahead, keep talking. Do that. Hang on, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, he wants me to stop talking crap. Hang on, Rob. You stand still there right now. Don't you move, Rob. Don't you move. I'm going to, I'm going to bring him in. We're going to bring Rob in. Rob's fun to talk to. So just so everybody knows, uh, me and Rob get along he, and, and I like Rob, but he's going to, he, I'm going to, I'm warning you, he's going to piss you off. I'm pre-warning you, he's going to piss you off. Um, just so he knows if he jumps in here. It's not intentional. Uh, it's a natural ability. Um, he, well, he's from California. So it's almost a natural ability to, to upset you, right? So well, I think I, I, Ryan bring and, and I, this is exactly what I wanted. If he pops in here, I wanted Ryan to also be able to talk to him. Uh, you, yeah, you can turn your camera. You don't have a camera. You have a camera on? No, you can turn it off. Is, is it off? Oh, yeah, it's off. All right, where are you, Rob? I dropped the link for you. He's also um, going to take like 20 minutes to come in here because he's he's technology he's technology uh, uh, yeah, it's not good. He's not good with tech. That's I'm trying to be nice before he comes in here. Just so you know. There's your streamyard link, Rob. It's about damn time. All right, let's see when he comes in here. We'll wait though. Let me um okay, let me read this. This is the other aspect I uh, which I think people are nuts. I think people are nuts. All right, judging. Uh, is, did I read this part? Information advanced partner systems. Yeah, hang on, because I copied and pasted this because I couldn't. I, I couldn't pull up the article. All right, there it is. Um, judging by overrides, early year survey, more owner operators seem to agree with Springfield than Rutherford, meaning they want broker transparency. Right. The survey followed closed on heels of reporting around broker margins and trust in a major freight rate. Indices, indices, indices. Uh, the survey also asked about. I'm on. I, I need more medication. Um, the survey also the medication keeps me calm. You could you imagine that? Um, the survey also asked about transaction transparency in the context of the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration pursuit of a potential rulemaking that could go so far to require automatic disclosure of transactions reported after any load, including what the shipper paid. Full so essentially what they want to do is, the, this is why they want transparency. They want transparency yeah. for, for, for malice, right? So that they can put it out there that this broker makes this much money, don't haul their freight. Well, like, that's exactly well, what they did with TQL. Well, and honestly, when you get when you get uh, transparency, you're, there's supposed to be a non-disclosure involved, yeah. and you're not supposed to be talking about this. You know, if you if you got transparency for your business and you feel like you don't want to do business with that person, then don't do business with that person. But for you to go out and spread malice to you know defamate the the business because they got a 44 percent gross margin, that's absolutely ridiculous and. You know, Hang on, if it me... was really hurting TQL's business, then they would do something about it. But it's not hurting their business, obviously. All right, I just got my I just got my chat working, guys. Sorry, it was it was spinning the the blue wheel. So now I got I can read chat. I can pull chat down. There it is, right there. Uh, let's see what we got here in chat. Just so you know, let's kind of rifle through this. I got life in a box. Are you okay? Well, I'm never really okay. I'm in freight. Um, I think you need a kiosk. I do need a kiosk. Life in a box. This that's that's basically Rob. Uh, sub say sage sage. How's it going there? Uh, Anthony Bresser. See code names in here. Um, howdy summary. Uh, have you? We have all we have all do our thing and forget the rest. Yes, that's pretty much what it is. Jerome, I see that's why I don't count people's packets who care with another business makes as long. As you know your numbers and make a profit, correct? Exactly. Right. Exactly. Death to and the Ryan... people that don't know their numbers that are screaming from the rooftops about broker transparency. And if there is broker yeah. transparency, then it's just going to be a race to the bottom. Yeah. The rates are going to go explain down. That. I'm going to explain that for any carrier that wants to come in. So right now, a death to I ride. Okay, really, real question. Why are you wearing? I am the bathrobe freight broker, because one person said all I do is sit here in a bathrobe. 
and 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 answer phones. So I said, "Fuck it, okay." And I went with it. This is a bathrobe. I've got a series of bathrobes coming um, because I've got a bunch of people that are now sending me bathrobes. I don't I don't I'm know why. T-shirt. I'm not going to be the guy in the T-shirt like the, that wears the you know like the like the the girlfriend that wears the T-shirt. Uh, I'm not going to be that guy. That's that. I'm going to stick with the bathrobes, right? I'm not going to. Now, I, now my wife's going to be coming on next week, so, uh, well, you won't be able to see her because I don't have a camera set up. But anyway, what's she going to be wearing though? Uh, this I'll have to leave uh, open for imagination, um, and we'll have to wait to see when she shows up, basically, because I have no idea. I have no idea what she's going to be wearing. No. Um, Jerome, let's see why I don't. Okay, so that's why I'm wearing that. Uh, we need to keep discussing the issue. Is no education correct and of the industry? Drivers get class one training, but not programs to teach trucking business and working in the spot market. Correct. Stumble and Fumble 101 there's, is the only course. I mean, there's people out there that are teaching this, but they don't want to listen. They don't want to pay uh, for it. They don't want to pay yeah, for it or they, they don't, don't want to listen. That's the truth. Even, even free knowledge. I mean, there's people putting out free knowledge and, yes. and they want to listen. Correct. You know, so. Well, we're gonna, so here, hang on. So we got, let me, because we you talked about the fact of, of just malice. Uh, 73% of the survey, did I read this? 73% of the survey respondents said either that they could benefit from disclosure and the shipper's rate on a brokered load with the increased leverage of negotiations. Now, I'm gonna, that's wrong, but we'll discuss that in a minute. Or that disclosure could help them avoid brokers who take too big of a cut. What's too big of a cut? So, hold on. So, yeah. so... If I so I have to give you my transparency before I negotiate a rate. Uh, no, it would be immediately after. Immediately after you'd have to give it. They want it immediately. Okay. So maybe before. So the, deal, so the deal's already done. So what does it matter now? Um, I I think or they the want it. Before, you want to haul that load? Maybe next time. All right. So basically, here's what this thing it's, pulls. Everything doesn't get posted to the load board either. So there, I mean, the transparency. Yeah. So here, hang on, hang on. So this is knowing, that, uh, you can barely read this, knowing more readily how much the shipper is paying on a brokered load would help with negotiations. 55% of that people say true, they want that. that. That's why they're doing it. It would help with negotiations. All right. It won't. Here's why. And I, I have explained this. I don't know how to say this, but the problem is, is, I want somebody's ass up here who actually feels broker transparency is good. And no one will show. No one will come up here. No one will debate me on this. Somebody find me somebody to talk about this. And I will act. Everybody's, I'm sorry, I, do, I lose respect for people that have no problem screaming and shouting about something. But when somebody wants to actually debate it at, with logical discourse and actually stand my ground on it, they run away. I have no respect for you people because you can only yell in an echo chamber. I will never run from a debate. I might not lose, win everyone, but I won't run from one. If somebody says, I'll debate you on that stage, all right, let's do it. So if you can't stand against the people that disagree with you, but you can only stand with the people who d agree with you. That's a pussy. Your statement is bullshit. You don't have the you don't have the grounds, the intelligence, or the ability to stand your ground and defend your position. You can't defend your position. Don't call yourself a patriot. Don't dare call yourself a patriot if you can't defend your position with words. You're not. So uh, uh, a lot of this survey, I don't believe, are real owner operators. I think that the survey was posted, um, and 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 traffic was driven to it. You know, go, you know, tell people how you feel. Um, you know, there's people that are not even in the industry that probably took this survey. Um, and maybe Overdrive had a similar survey like that, asking what people think broker margins are, because. Mm -hmm. Read an article and the survey popped up and I and I and I uh, I wasn't I you know I responded to the survey. Yeah, I actually took a screenshot of it. You did what? You, you broke up? Oh, he might he might have broke up. He's on my stream here. Thing. It's not me because I'm plugged in. 
So we might lose people in and out if they're in cars and stuff. So let me go over this a little bit more. Tw- just 20% of the respondents came out on the other side of the bait. Most indicating that... They- I can hear you now. Okay, so I did a... I, Overdrive had a survey uh, about... Uh, so it says, what what's the biggest margin percentage you've seen a broker keep on a load you hauled? Yep. It only takes two seconds to weigh in, then access the results to find out what your peers are saying. So 22% yeah. said 60% or more of what the shipper was paying. Okay. Now I have a couple questions to that. How do they know? Yeah, right? exactly. And two, do like I just, I, I just billed my customer $5,000 for a load. I just paid my carrier, the carrier, the truck. $2,000 for the load. The load went 22 miles, and I paid him $2,000 for the load. But I billed 5000 Why? Do you know why? Does anybody know why? I know why, but you don't know why. Because the other two grand, or actually 2500 was for that predatory tow truck guy. I don't consider predatory. He had to move this thing around a good deal. We had something that had to be moved by a wrecker, a, cr- a, a tow truck. It was a busted crane that wouldn't move. He had to come out, and p- we had to pull the truck out. He had to tow the crane out. Then we had to drop the trailer. Then we- He was there all day, right? I had to pay him 2500 bucks. I had to pay him $2,500 to put the cra- bring out his rig to move a 70,000-pound crane. So guess what? I didn't make $3,000. I made $500. Because, but you wouldn't have known that because I did all the billing. It went all through me and I paid everybody. Right? Now, let me, let me, let me read this. Uh, just, 20, just 20% of the respondents came out on the other side saying most indicated that they didn't care what the broker made as long as they were well compensated. Okay. Springfield, a variety of, tr- and a variety of trucking companies, including the Owner Operator Independent Driving Association and the National Owner Operator Association, have called out the FMCSA for dragging their feet in transparency rulemaking. OIDA and most of the recent delay from the FMCSA regs calendar pushed the issue until October of this year. Uh, simply BS. Kevin Rutherford, for his part, focuses mostly on how owner operators can live. Th- like, this is bad. Like, this is bad. Who wrote this? Hey, Alex, anytime you want to come on my show and kind of explain this situation, I mean, let's talk about it, bro. Uh, Kevin, and I'm, look, am I a Kevin Leghumper? No. Am I I the information he puts out? Oh, hell yeah. I'll listen to that all day. If if I, do I agree with all of it? No. But I'll listen to it because there's a ton of good information out there. All right. Where's he at? Uh, Hang on. Uh, so focus on that, on that, what the FMSA shouldn't do and shouldn't mandate. Nevertheless, he argues with advocates on the other side of transparency debate on X and Twitter for those conversations. Got every bit as wacky as you might expect from prolonged entrenched internet, internet engagement before we block most of them and shortly after Matt's. At Matt's on the first day, he argued the, the arguments jumped from seven from the screen to the stage. After a long morning of heading to up to the CMCA workshop, packed with business advice for owner-operators, Hudo and Rutherford kicked off their pro-talk session, The Carriers Stay Alive and Thrive. Talk focused yeah. on how you can choose the right freight and cost controls while also veering into insights on stress and mindset management. Rutherford, 40 years' experience in the trucking industry, illustrated how easy – I'm sorry – how his early failures as a small fleet owner forced him to radically consider his approach and take total ownership of the business and mindset. His failures, everything that he screwed up and was on the verge of collapse, he said, oh, shit, maybe it's me. Maybe yeah. it's me. And he's, I mean, I, Kevin, Kevin said multiple times that he was about to, you know, go bankrupt. Correct. Um, I think it was like two, three times where he almost was, you know, bankrupt. Yeah. But so, so what did he do? More, more how to how to be more efficient in your business. So basically, what Not, he he know. said, he basically stood, sat down and said, "This is my problem. I need to fix this shit." He didn't sit there and say, "It's their problem. You should fix it for me." He said, "This is my problem. I will fix this shit." 
It's my business. It's my life. It's my family. I was fucking there. I was dead ass broke in 2008. Dead ass broke. With some, my wife coming to me saying, crying, saying, how are we going to pay our, for food? And I dug my ass out. From 4 o'clock in the morning until 12 o'clock at night, I was pushing my brokerage. Moving freight. Making money. Because it was my problem. Not once. Not once did I go for welfare, unemployment, none of that shit. Not once. I've never received a PPP loan. I've never received an EIDL loan. Not saying that. I'm, I have never taken money. Not once. Everything I've got, every, and you can obviously see I may or may not eat too much. Everything I've done and the food that I've got, I got myself. I did it myself. No free load boards, no waking up and looking at truck stops saying, what, lo what load am I going to move next? I called customers. I worked my ass into them. I built trust. I did a hell of a job. And I made every fucking dime I've made that way. I'm a self-made motherfucking man. Come talk to me when you guys can work without a load board for 18 years. Hey, Come Sage, if you think they, if they took the time to prospect their own customers instead of yelling about broker transparency, how much more successful do you think they'd be? They'd be Spectre. They'd be Spectre. Because that's exactly what fucking Spectre did. Spectre went about it without a fucking brokerage. Even though I'm like, bro, you're, you're killing yourself. You need a brokerage. He's like, fuck you, Sage. I'm doing it my way. I said, fuck you, Spectre. You're not. Well, motherfucker did it. He did it. Yeah. He did it. He's got direct customers. He's got a fleet. He's got paid W9 drivers. He's got independent contractors. Doesn't have a fucking load board. He's got, he's got His customers are saying, look, can you get more trucks? We want to use you. Can you bring on more people? He did it. That's why I bring that dude on. Even and, and we disagree. Like I said, we disagreed. We bitched at each other and yelled at each other. But that's just what happens. That's how you basically find both sides of the story. And you say, I, you know what? I like what Sage is doing. Or you say, fuck Sage. I like what Spectre's doing. But at least you're making a decision and following a path. This is what Kevin fucking Rutherford does. He shows you a path. Do you want to know what the best people do? They take his information and they tweak that shit to their own. Because that's what I do. When I learn information, I'm not just sitting there and listening to Kevin. And just saying, I'm going to take everything what he says and only do what he says. I'm like, that's good, that's good, that's good. How can I make that better? How can I make that work for me? How can I improve on that? Because I like that. And that's how businesses are built. That's how thinking outside the box works. That's why I've been doing this by myself. And I know I say this all the time. You're like, oh, you, you need to be humble or you need to be, you know. It, it, no, I did it. So all everybody that's out there saying you can't, fuck you. I'm standing here doing it every day. I'm still doing it. Partially retired. All right. Rather 40 years experience, illustrated his early fleet. Okay. Uh, he spoke about this superpower, his ability to learn new things, read two books a week or more. Uh, it was near the end of the event when things began to veer off course. Uh, if somebody says you're not succeeding in business, he said, the, and the reason is why it is not me, then you're wrong. Like if, if you're saying, hey, you're not succeeding in business, you got to say, why am I not able to do this? What am I doing wrong? Not what can the government do? What is the government doing wrong? Government's fucked up. Let me teach you something that I've learned in my 48 years of life. Being a part of the government with the United States Coast Guard, they're fucked up. Learn it now. Because it has in the 48 years of life that I've been out there, it's, it's still fucked up. It's fucked up yeah. in the military. It's fucked up in regular life. It's fucked up in trucking. They I mean, are. you can look at how our veterans are treated and know that. Yeah. I mean, how, it's, I fuck, mean. it's fucked up. They're fucked up. They screw up. If you're planning on them to get it right and fix it, don't stop waiting. They won't. They won't. Uh, another Be thing to that, Sage, is, is people, you know, a lot of, like, to get, like, off topic a little bit, like, um, uh, 
you know, people are pushing like universal health care and let the yeah. government do it. Oh but, God. Like, you were in the service. Let's let's talk about the level of health care provided to, to members of the service. Canada. Canada's rough. <laughs> Canada's like, thinks it's a lot of the time to, to get... control health no. care. Talk to no. somebody in the service about their health care experiences no. while they were active. No, do I mind that that do I maybe want government to step in and say, hey, you know, maybe we should figure out a way for, for fees and for charges so that they're not they're not out of control. But I oh, don't want complete con- government <laughs> social health care. Right. Nope. Actually, I'm losing you. Are you telling me you want doctor transparency? Uh, I don't want doctor transparency. I don't give a shit what they know. I just want if the government can find a way that they're not like they did with um, uh, insulin, right? Where they can basically say, hang on, guys, we can lower the. That's fine. I don't need to know what they make at all. They I didn't just, lower the price. They just subsidized the business. The what, price is still the price. Now the government writes a check to the to the pharmaceutical company. Okay. Why did, I'm just saying, if there's a way for them to, I don't care what the way is, but if there's something that they can come in, like I used to go to the doctor and I didn't have insurance, and they'd be like sixty dollars, and then when I did have insurance, the bill's like five hundred dollars. I'm like, you didn't do anything different than you did the first time. What the hell is this? You, you know what I mean? I don't care, <laughs> right? I don't care. You're if you want to get on if you want to get on government health care, get on government health care. But don't force me. <laughs> you know you know what I'm saying? Don't force me. That's my mindset. If they think they can run it, do it. Do it. All right, hang on. Uh succeed in business, then get a, okay. Um if you are saying I'm not doing it because the rates are bad, then get out of business because the rates are always bad. If you're saying I'm not doing it because well because brokers are ripping me off, then get out of business. Rather for continued pushing then. I'll I'll make it my responsibility to succeed, he said. Yes, it's my job to succeed. It's mine, not yours. I don't want your fucking help. I don't want your help. I started this business. I'll figure it out. I don't want your help, government. All right. Um, If I don't, all I can do is bitch about like everyone else does. I know a lot of people in this business are always suffering, never happy, and it's always someone else's fault. I'm not seeing the attitude of I bought a truck. I'm entitled to a profit. Exactly. I hear this all the time. I own the truck. I own the trailer. I did the investment. I've got all the skin in the game. Motherfucker, I got the intelligence in the game. I, I, I don't know what to tell you. I can buy a truck and put a driver in it. A shipper can buy a truck and put a driver in it. And and we're going to talk about this. this, We're going to come back to this. We're going to circle back around, right? We're going to circle back around because I don't see Rob in here, you you rat bastard. Jump in here, Rob. Let me read this. Uh, Same for a broker. Anyone can open a brokerage with zero knowledge or training. He's right. I don't want that, but he's right. Uh, This is CDN. Uh, we only hope that there are good mentors to teach others, but current bad brokers show more mentoring happenings. Exactly. Because you know what happens? You get a bunch of these bad brokers that know that, hey, I, I did this, and I'm going to go ahead and just tell everybody else how I did this. And they end up being bad brokers. They end up being bad brokers. Uh, there is no next time after broker transparency. Yeah, exactly. All right. Uh, if a freight brokers are making that much... Uh, why haven't every carrier with an MC go get a broker MC? Don't forget, if you open a brokerage, you will need one million credit line or factoring company. Correct, correct. You 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 you, got, you better have a factoring company, and then you better that just because I've got a factoring company, if my factoring company gives somebody fifty thousand dollars in credit. That don't mean I'm giving that motherfucker fifty thousand dollars. I might be like, well, let's do ten because I don't know how you guys pay i don't know how quick you pay i'm not putting myself out there for 30 grand because understand even though i have a factoring company there's no uh if if that company goes under i I might lose out so that factoring company is just a means to be able to pay quickly and give me some sense of security to be able to handle all that quick pay com checks it's still my job to monitor my customers credit line if they go under, I'm out. Done. All right. Uh, just got out of business. Shit, yeah. You, Nar can you can talk to to to, to the to the shit hawk there. I'll be back with him in a minute. Um, Rutherford took the time to embroil nothing. Okay, nothing. What he's against 
is business people making decisions driven principle by emotions. That is that he wanted to stress the importance of truck owners focusing on few things that they could control. We can't control the economy. We can't control regulations, he said, but we can control how we react to it. That's the beauty of being an owner operator. Uh, truck stop Brent Hero address. I'm sorry if I'm messing up your name, Brett, um, because I'll be on. I'll be at Matt's next year be- with you uh, through video. Um, just letting you know that's going to happen. Um, addressing some murmurs in the crowd and moving on to a question uh, Q and A. Springfield's hand shot up. Oh me 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 broker me me pick me 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 shut up. Um, I've received fifty six percent of the load. When I received my broker transparency. No, 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 no. You did not receive 56%. You took the load. We didn't force the load on you. You took the load, and when you ran the load, you said, I'll take that load for that amount of money. You did not receive that money. You took 56%. Fifty-six percent. Sage, yep. you also have to put this out there that they are no mm-hmm. longer authorized to run uh, intrastate commerce, only interstate commerce. I guess now All the right. same the same uh, person who got transparency. So basically, they lost their MC and they're running a DOT and they have to run within the state that they're in. So right now, if they're in Texas, yeah. they have to stay so in. Just so we know, they're out of business. You're right. I'm just saying that that's what you just said, so everybody understands, right? So she took 50% because at that time, whatever that load was, she said yes to that price. She said, I, no broker forced and said, you have to take this. We, no one, no one's done that. So you need to understand that you made a bad business decision. You made a bad bit. I've made them. Ryan's made them. He won't admit to it, Uh, but you made one too. Kevin's made them. Oh shit! I've had a lot of bad business decisions. Wait. We've lost. I've lost a shit ton of money. Yeah, and one of the bad ones is probably coming was, on my show and being associated with me. That could be a bad business decision, to be no. honest. So, I mean, well, I'll tell you a story about you know being in the construction industry. My family owned yeah. a construction, uh, a residential remodeling company. We did roofing, siding, windows, doors, stuff like that. Um, one day we were doing a customer's roof, and the guys didn't protect the side of the house. Like they should. And you have debris falling from the roof going down. Yeah. We ended up having to reside the customer's whole house. Nice. So <laughs> the day that that happened, me, my brother, and my cousin packed up our wives and our kids. I didn't have kids at the time, but my brother and my cousin did. Yeah. And we were all partners in the business. We packed them all up and we drove to Florida for two weeks after we lost that all that money. You have to replace all the siding on that house. I'm going to need to. <laughs> We're like, we need to take a break, you know, like you, you lose money. That That's $20,000 down the drain right there. Exactly. Exactly. And this is what people don't understand. You made a bad business decision. Sorry. I don't know why I can't mod you right now, Mark. Uh, Nark. I, it won't let me click the button. I'll figure it out, though. Um, you made a bad business decision. All right. When the load she received for, I received my broker transparency. Springfield started to say, referring to her encounter with TQ on the FMSA, I do believe brokers are taking more than that. She continued before she was cut off. I would have let her. I, listen, Springfield, find me. Find me and come talk to me. Come debate me on this. Stand up and, and debate your side. With somebody that's ready to rock and roll with this. I'll drop you a link. Somebody tag her. I've already tagged her on YouTube. Uh, I do believe they're taking more. Uh, You know what I say to that, said Rutherford? Congratulations to the broker. You did a hell of a job. I don't care if they take 84%. Who do injected asking Springfield if there were any brokers she did, in fact, trust? I do, she said. Great. There are more than 10,000 brokers that you can work with, said Hoodoo. Uh, am I pronouncing that right? Who cares? Uh, but only a few at the top of it are controlling most of these lanes, Springfield shot back. At this point, Rutherford ex- excused himself. I know, uh, I know myself, and in this statement, I will not be pleasant. Well, that's probably me. I wouldn't excuse myself. I would have been like, game on! Let's, let's play the game. Let's show what happens with broker transparency. After the session, Springfield said that she raised transparency issues because her, she knew Rutherford was against it. I'm against it. Where are you at? 
How do you succeed without broker transparency? Very simple. You, you dictate the amount of money you want to haul the load. You, so she, so she, so that, so she asked about broker transparency how do you, is, is, with is, malice intent, cl- right? Here, how do you, well, here it is right here. Knew, Go ahead. She knew, so she asked about pro, broker transparency. She just yeah. said it right there in the article yeah. with malice intent because she knew that he was against it. Yes. How do you succeed without broker transparency? She asked, I wanted to know why you're against it. And is anyone else fighting or is there just a few of us? There's a lot of people, anyone I met. I I meet at a truck stop. They all want to fight broker transparency, but they're scared. Okay. She doesn't know. She didn't want to know why he was against it. She already knew he was against right. it. And she we're gonna. It, we're, I'm right? gonna explain so why you this is bad. Ask me why. I'm I'm against it, and Correct. you're and you're trying to trigger me in front of a crowd of people who have paid Correct. me to learn about the business, and you you did not pay me. Correct. I do not owe you anything. So I'll just remove myself from right. this situation. And that's fine. And Kevin, now, did, the, I Kevin the, did the exact right thing. Kevin does. Sage does not do the right thing. That's probably why I end up where I'm at sometimes. But yeah. Kevin does, <laughs> right? And there would have been, not that there would have been a fight. I don't fight. I just use words. I use my words very well. And, and uh, you're not going to, you will not win this stance. We're going to explain why. Uh, Springfield herself has reported being blacklisted by brokers. That is unfortunate. But welcome to the welcome to business. Yep. Uh, she, I, she it's said, not blacklisted. It's they just choose to not do business with correct. you. Correct. I choose no not to do business. Thing, Listen, let me no explain something to you. Broker blacklist. I have had I have had carriers. I've had a carrier go in to my customer with a bad attitude. Nothing to do with pay. He had a problem at home. He had a problem at home. By the time he took my load, something happened at home with his wife. He had an issue at home. He had a bad attitude. The, the money was fine. He had a bad attitude about his wife. It, something happened. I'm not going to get into that. He had an attitude at my customer. My customer tossed his ass out of his facility. He said, get out. You're going to talk to my people like you just did? Get out of my facility. Guess what? That carrier will never haul my freight ever again. Never. Ever, 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 ever again. Had nothing to do with transparency. We, I have basically chose that to, to take somebody who has a bad attitude improper t- spoke to my cussed at one of the loaders basically said why the fuck are you loading it like that you can't put it there because I'm, I'm open deck and the and the, the crane operator who's also the, the the shipping manager heard him came out of the crane said what did you say to my guy called me on the phone told me and, and he's like i'm tossing him i'm like toss him toss him out i ain't paying him shit get him out of there it's not it, it, that that type of conversation is not professional and it's not safe and it could turn into an altercation. Get him out of that facility. Me and the production, me and the shipping manager both agreed. They took the shit off his truck and we, they waited for me to bring in another truck and his ass was out. That, it had nothing to do. This is stuff that I that we can do. It is it, it, that you're that person's now technically blacklisted for me. Now, do I do carrier 411? I don't. I don't do any of that shit. But he won't ever haul one of my loads again. And my loads pay real well. <laughs> That's the thing. Like, I don't use carrier 411 either. But we have an internal do not use list. Correct. So, like, you know, it's it's. Uh, I, I'm not going to go put somebody on carrier 411 because I know what it could do to their business. Correct. And I know that, that if there is an issue, that it is probably... Because of emotions, yeah. right? It's not that he's a bad businessman. He just got his, his emotions got the best of him that day. 100%. Now, if you put on carrier four one one, now this guy would be out of business. He wouldn't be able to feed his children. So I'm not I'm not for carrier four one one. Just you know, just so that you know, that's I mean, carrier four one one. I don't I don't like and it that, at all. So for me, you did it to me. I, it, I'll handle it. You're going on my list. Okay, and, yeah. and it's it, I'll tell you, I ain't gonna lie. It's bad when you can when you don't get my loads because I ain't paying. Gee, I, look, man, I got guys that are paying. Holy shit, you're paying that? Yeah, I need a good. I need a done. I need a good job. I need you. I need. Look, I pay you to babysit me. How much yep. is it going to cost for you to babysit me? I'm not babysitting you and giving you a good rate. If I give you a good rate, your ass is babysitting me. All right. I mean, we're not talking diaper changing. But you're going to be like, hey, where are you, what are you doing right now? Here's where I'm at with your load. <laughs> Here's pictures <laughs> of your load. I mean, I literally would say, how much does it cost for that type of service? 
because that's what I want. And then I pay it. Yeah. I, dude, I, want, I have paid on legal the, every freight. Every hour on the hour. What's the price? <laughs> uh, no, it, it just because this is how important my customer is, and this is what my customer wants. So when you get, yeah. So if you get tossed out of mine, it hurts if you were hauling a lot of my freight, because now you're going back to the shitbag brokers, which and and some good, but some bad. She said that overdrive uh, connect her back and forth with TQL and owner operators. She pursued broker transparency. Oh, okay, this is the blacklisting. Um, and that she's opened to helping other drivers work with the FMCSA to enforce this. Bad idea. Don't let someone else put you on a blacklist to put yeah, you in. To gonna, put you, don't take a stance. Yeah, Listen, charge you a fee too. I, I just got blacklisted. I just got kicked out of brokerages. I just did this. You should do it too. No, maybe you shouldn't. Maybe you shouldn't do it. Don't what gets me blacklisted and what gets me thrown out and what gets me to lose money and what gets me to, to basically go under. I don't tell other people to do that. See why I get upset. See why I'm on medication. Uh, what they don't understand too is, is a lot of these shippers, like a lot of the big shippers and uh, are, are brokers also and yeah. also carriers. Like they have their own trucks. They have their own brokerage. Like, <laughs> or, or they have, you know, they have a like a supply chain management company, right? So they're 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 contracted with like Ryder or Penske to to manage their supply chain. Like Target. Target, you have to call tar you have to call Penske or or um you have to call either Penske or Ryder and get a T number in order to deliver into Target. Because yes, they yes. manage their supply chain. Because I remember uh, uh, I, had a bu I had a guy that something happened and he was trying to deliver into a um, Cardinal something. And he had to, we had to get a number. And I, I actually dug into how to set an appointment at, for him at, at um, this company. I can't remember what it was. But yes. Let me finish, yeah. this. Let me finish this real quick. We're almost done. We're almost done with this one. They also, have, they also hire you know, uh, people to manage like their RFPs and stuff like that, too. Oh, this is the like, best. This is the best. Just We're going to end this uh, for 49. When I'm working like a donkey and I'm only making enough money to pay a cell phone bill and you're hanging the phone up on me because I'm asking questions like, is there a detention? And you're saying, this job is not for you then. Her fight takes on new urgency. Okay. Now, here's what I will give her. If you are asking questions about, hey, is there detention? D you know, just real quick question. Uh, have you ever delivered there before? If I'm a carrier and someone's like, well, how long do they normally take the load? And I'm like, look, we, I give them three hours. So if you'd like to tack on an extra hundred bucks because you only give two hours, before you give me your price, tack that hundred bucks on. Because I give them three. But I'm telling you I give them three. So whatever price you give me now, if you want $100 detention then, and you want to do the load for $2,000, then you better tell me $2,100. Just tell me $2,100 and I'll pay you $2,100. And if you, if you get out of there in an hour and a half, who gives a shit? Who gives a shit? But don't call me at two hours and say, well, I only do two because we've already talked about this. So I do understand that if a, dry, if a carrier is calling up and saying, hey, what do they do for detention or do you know how long they, it takes to get this thing unloaded? Like, how does this type of process? Those are questions that a carrier is allowed to ask, and they should be asking. And if a broker's not answering them, you're dealing with a bad broker. Hang up on that motherfucker. Hang up on him if, and say, bro, you, you can't tell me about detention. These are questions I need to ask so that when I establish a price, we can make sure that we, you know, we get this all out front and, and we handle this. This is how business works. So you got two options. Option A, you don't like the broker. Ask for his supervisor. Pull a Karen. You know what Karen gets? Karen gets better responses. Hey, you know what? We're kind of struggling on this one. Is all right if I talk to your supervisor? Because I, I think me and you just are at a point where we're not going to get anything done. Um, I le I'd like to escalate this call to your supervisor. You have the right well, to do is, that. This is why relationships and running certain lanes are important as well. Correct. Like, but what I'm saying is if... If Bot you're being a dick, to around to the highest paying freight, you're gonna deal with this stuff. Yeah, see, but, but if you if, if listen, if you're being a dick to a driver, a dick, right? And you work for me, and he has to talk to me, that's that's poor training on my part with you, right? If if you're actually being a dick, right? Not if he's just saying you're being a dick.
But if you're actually being that dick, that's poor training on my part as, a, as your supervisor. I need to be making sure that you not only can you properly communicate, that you're not getting frustrated with drivers that are asking this stuff. I know you want to get frustrated, but you can't. So then he's going to come to me and I'm going to sit down and I'm going to find out what happened here and what can I do better to more properly train you to interact with carriers. That's my fault. I'm your manager. That's my job, right? So if you're a carrier and you're not getting someplace, you are the owner of your business. Ask to speak to the supervisor of the broker if he's a dick. Even if he just hung up on you, call back. Say, uh, I was just speaking with a Darren. Can I speak to Darren's supervisor? Because guess what? If I've got a broker that's being, an agent that's being that way, I want to know. I want to fix that problem. I don't want that problem. But if you're not telling me, if you're not progressing that to the next level, then he's going to continue on and I don't know about it. I got no way to correct him. You have the right to ask for the supervisor of the broker he's beating. Now, if it's just he won't pay you, but he's being nice. The supervisor might just say, yeah, we can't, we're not authorized to go that high. It's not him. We're just a customer who won't authorize that price, right? That's different. But if you got brokers saying, oh, you want attention? Click. Motherfucker, my agent ain't talking to people like that. That's going to get handled. So she has that. I understand that aspect if that's happening. But if you're not doing anything to correct the issue with the logistics company that you just called, you're not helping the next driver, because I'm telling you, if you said, I'm going to need to speak to your manager on this one. I don't, I'm not going to haul the load. I'm, I'm not comfortable with it. But I just didn't want you to go back and possibly le- listen to the recording and see how he spoke with me. And if, is this how you allow your, your, your agents to, to speak people, your customer services to speak to carriers? Maybe that's something you're going to want to look at internally and then go on from there. I mean, a lot of these brokers now are, are, are like you, uh, where there's not... There's not a manager, honestly. They are the they're the owners. Yeah. They're the man. I mean, if you talk to me, I, I'm constantly. I mean, I'm a nice guy when you talk to me. I I I, I really am. Like I, I'm, and we're going back and forth. I joke with you a little bit. If I if you, I, there's been times drivers are, are are a little low on their price, and I'm like, bro, I think you're a little low. Uh, fuel over here, like when when we had COVID and fuel shot up, and somebody was going to run a Florida load, he gave me a price, and I'm like, bro, did you know fuel is going up in in Florida? He's like, oh, no, I didn't. Why don't we calculate that again? Like, because I don't want you to fail on my load, right? Now, let's stop talking about me. Let's go back to this, because we'll get back to this. And CDN, I guarantee if he's listening, he's going to say the same thing. If he's got an agent, because you've heard CDN's interview, if he's got an agent that works underneath him, and they're being a shitbag to drivers, I mean, and and he can go back and listen, and it really was the agent, he's going to fix that problem. (laughs) Because that's our job. But we don't know unless sometimes it's brought to us. We try to interact and listen to these calls. Like I, I used to go back and listen to some of, some of the calls that when I had agents and, and hear their interactions and see if there was something they could have did better or, or properly responded better. But it, I, don't, I didn't listen to every one. But if it was brought to my – it was never brought to my attention because it, I, I, I don't believe I had issues. But I'm dealing with – we were dealing with different drivers, overdimensional different driver too. So anyways – uh, Rutherford too reminded Satch in his position in the aftermath when I explained to her what broker transparency really meant she, re- she didn't get it he said and it's not what she thinks it is in addition feeling that automatic record disclosure requirements on brokers would be a race to the bottom for rates I can give you 15 other reasons why broker transparency is a bad idea I'd, uh, I'd I probably did mock them, and I'd do it again. Yeah, I would too. I'd do it right now. But I call this tough love, not mockery. No hard feelings in the end. Springfield said that she inspired by Rutherford. Good. That's fantastic. Then she should reach out to me because I will literally break it down step by step, and I'll be nice. Well, in the beginning. No, I'll be nice. Uh, Even if she disagrees with transparency issue, I need to read more books, she joked. Uh, Twitter beef disagreement debate and final analysis don't stop the world from spinning, and especially too when both sides uh, get back to business. So I, I think Ke- you're, you're lucky you're dealing with Kevin. I ain't gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. You're lucky you're dealing with Kevin because I would have been. Here's what I would have did, and I've done this multiple times. Boom! You're all getting broker transparency, and I want you to be honest with yourself if you drive a truck out there. Be honest with yourself. 
I've got $5,000 on this load from Houston to Syracuse or from Syracuse to Houston. I don't give a shit. I got $5,000. It's a legal van for a load. I got $5,000 on billing the customer. That's the real number. You call me on the phone. The first thing I'm going to say to you is, what is your quote to do this load? And I'm going to say, I've got $5,000 in it from the customer. Give you all the pertinent information. You can do the load. And then, of course, I'm going to check to make sure that you got a good safety score and all that other shit. But let's, let's pretend everybody does. And I say, how much will you do the load for? And you tell me 48. All right. Thank you for your offer. I'll get back to you. Then I'm going to post it out there. And the next person that calls, I'm going to say, I already have an offer for 48. I have 5,000 in it. What would, you like, what would you like to do the load for? What is your quote? What is your price? Do you know how I know this is going to happen? Do you know how I know this will happen? Because it's fucking what I do every day. I go to a customer and I say, it's $5,000 to move this load. Another broker comes in and says, 48. <laughs> That's what happens. I lost Ryan. That's all right. That's what happens. That's the reality of it. Customers 10 times take the lowest rate. You all talk about this. You all know when brokers lose bids to another broker because they undercut them. You know what happens. It's already happening. You don't think it'll happen to you because you get to see what the load pays? Why? Why could you possibly think that? Now, I know why nobody calls in. Either way, why could you possibly think that something that's already happening over here on this part of the industry, once we give it to you on this part of the industry, you don't think it'll happen? You think magically, oh, that won't happen. Once that driver hears I bid 48, he's going to be like, no, I'll give it to that driver. I'll bid 49. Well, I'm not giving it to you for 49 if he's doing it for 48. Well, we're going to, I want 52. I don't have 52 in it. I already told you what the car. No, nah, I want 55. Do you think that's what's going to happen? When does that ever happen? Ever. When do you go to three mechanics to fix your car and one mechanic says $3,000 and then the other one and then the other one goes and says 3200 and the other one says 3500? And you say, I'm going to go to the 3,500 guy. Why would you do wh What? Think about it. Just stop and think about it. You know how much. So what? So what? I had this conversation uh, with Dean, and, and, and he may be in here. He might have jumped off. Uh, oh, he might have messaged me. What did he say? Probably said, I'm not coming on your show. I'm scared. Is that what you said, Dean? I'm not coming on. I'm scared. Probably. Let me click on this because I don't know why. Uh, no, he didn't say. Either way, wh that's what would happen. Do you want to know what else happens? Customers come back and say, I don't want that rate getting out because my competition will undercut me. My manufacturing competition will undercut me. Do you want to know what else happens? Manufacturers add 10% or 15% on top of my rate. If there's any problems, the fact that they pay me, I've gone over this and over this and over this. And people, it, it, driver, it doesn't sink in. But the biggest problem is no one will defend their position in front of somebody with a counter position. You scream in echo chambers. You scream in echo chambers the same shit. And everybody's like, yeah, 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 yeah. The problem is people die when they do that shit. When nobody goes back and says, whoa, 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 whoa. Maybe we shouldn't attack when they're all hyped up on drugs and ready and and maybe we should wait till they're sleeping 
Do you know why? Maybe because the Marines own the night. We've got the best night vision. We've got the best training at night. Maybe we should wait till night. Counter, if you can't defend your position against your counter position, it might not be a good idea. You might want to think it through. Because I'm telling you what would happen. I'm showing you. And the best part is you know it will happen because you talk about it. You talk about it. And then you get this. I love this thing. When I, I got this from Rob last night. The issue is, is that if you're a one-truck fleet, you're a one-truck fleet, what value do you have for me compared to a 30-truck fleet? What special powers, what special gifts do you have? Why do I, if I've got 20 loads to move, why do I want to call 20 independent carriers when I can call one guy and be like, look, I got, I got 20 loads. How many trucks can you put them on, put on them? Well, I can do 10 and 10. We can do turn and burns. Here's my price. I'll call you back. Or I can go out and say, hey, Hey, Mr. So-and-so, how much will you do it for? Hey, Mr. What about you, Mr. So-and-so? What about you, Mr. Smith? What about you, Mr. Johnson? What about you, Mr. And now you all have different prices. Send a link. Why do you want a link? Why do you want a link? Hang on. I got to send a link. Where's my X? Uh, let me do this real quick. Where's my reaction? I'll be right back. Let me click on this. Let me click on this because I've already put a link on the top of my... Good to hear from you. The email will air tomorrow. Still can't hear me. Okay. Here's your link. Learn. I'll help you. Oh, hang on. He sent me a link. Uh, Ukraine faces a frontline collapse in France. Yeah, I'm going to bring a Ukraine guy on. I'm going to bring a Ukraine guy on, TJ. I'm, I'm reached out to a couple times. I'm going to drag him on so he can instruct you what's actually going on with Ukraine and Russia. How about that? Here's a link. All right, just in case you want to, I'm going to, but be careful. I'm in one of those. I'm, I'm, I'm firing away here, baby. All right. Let's talk about something. Let's truly understand something. Because like I said, when you look at a 50% profit on a load, that load might have made 50%, but the, uh, the, the load before that one made 4%. But they're going to, to pay the electric, to pay the gas, to pay the, 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 the labor, to pay the salespeople, to pay the cleanup crew, to pay the property taxes, to pay the possible warehouses, and all this other stuff, they need to make 25% profit to pay all that. That's what, that's, what the, that's what TQL might need to because they employ people. You don't. You don't employ people. And the problem is, is you don't have the business mindset to say, hey, I might want that brokerage to grow. I might want that them to get profit if they give me profit so that I grow. How much is your profit? When you take a load, how much is your business profit after everything? After you pay yourself, after you pay maintenance, your truck payment, any bill you got, what is your profit? Do you even know? All right, let me shuffle this down here. Let me turn this back on. All right, right here, I've got a chart, and it's blank. It's completely empty, except on top, there's the owner. There's the owner on top of this chart. There is a hierarchy for a business, and it's important that you have this structure. It's important to have a business structure. Why is it important to have that? Because when you have structure and when you have consistency, you can build your business. Now, you're sitting in a truck, you bought a truck, you bought a trailer, you got your insurance, you're up and running with your authority. You're the owner. That's a trucking company that your business owns. You stop there. You think that's the end of the road. You think, I, I, I should be, all the money I'm going to make, I'm going to pay my bills and buy a Ferrari, and I should be able to have a Ferrari. What about investing back into your company? What about that? All right? So you're the owner. What comes 
who if you're going to hire someone and you're going to build a business i want we we need to talk business you're going to build a business let me pop this open here right we're building a business so you hire somebody because you want to build your business who should you hire who would be the next pe- person that you might want to look into hiring for your business Maybe a general manager, maybe somebody that's going to, maybe you decide to go, hey, I'm a general manager, somebody that's going to handle the operations of the business, right? Because I'm going to need, I'm, I, I'm the owner. Do you know what's not at the top of this list right here? What's not at the top of this list is truck driver. Truck, it, it, truck driver is not th- at the top of the business list. If you weren't driving the truck, would truck driver be at the top of the list? Would the truck driver be above you if you weren't driving the truck? If you hired me to be to be a truck driver, where do I fall on this chart? Where would I fall? What position would I be at? Would I be above the salesman? Would, would I be above the general manager because I'm the guy driving the truck? Without me, you wouldn't be making money? Am I in charge? Is it you and then the truck driver and then the general manager and then the, the dispatch manager? Is the truck driver above the dispatch manager? Because what you need to understand is you're the owner of the business but you're sitting in the lowest position of your business. You can't make that separation. I'm the owner, but you think because you're the truck driver, if you took that, take that all that shit out and put a chart down on a piece of paper and say, where does the truck driver fall in the chart? The bottom. So if you're going to sit in the bottom position... And think you're in charge, you're, you're going to have these bad decision making. Because you, can, you can't understand where if it was your company and you weren't driving the truck, the truck driver is not above the general manager. That's not how the chart is formed. You have to know the roles. You have to know the hierarchy. You have to know the chain of command. Maybe we, you know what would fix a lot of this? is if we had mandatory military, if we made it where you had mandatory military, that you'd have to learn management skills, you'd have to learn chain of command, you'd have to learn this shit and understand why it works and understand the importance of it. So you have the owner of the company and then you have some type of general manager and that general manager is going to be in charge of, of, if you have a shop, he's going to be in charge of the workshop manager, in charge of the dispatch manager, in charge of the HR, and in charge of the CFO. He's going to be the one people check in. Your general manager is your CEO. You have a president and a CEO. That CEO is going to see going to basically... No, we're not talking about people that are on the stock market. We're just talking about business. That CEO is going to basically be overseeing all of the other uh, positions. So that dis- the manager of the dispatch who might have four dispatchers underneath them, those four dispatchers, the, the truck driver's at the bottom. He's hauling the freight. He has a problem. Who does he call? What's his chain of command? Dispatcher. That dispatcher's chain of command is a dispatcher manager. That dispatcher's manager, might, the manager might go right to the CEO. The CEO might go to the owner. And the reason there's a chain of command is, is basically you when you build a business, not one person can do everything. But yet, truck drivers, you guys can do everything. And you think you should be paid for every single position. And some when you when you don't get that you're you're in the bottom position right now. Just because you bought the truck don't mean shit. It don't mean shit. You're still performing the job of the lowest person on the totem pole. How many times do I have to say this? So what you, how do we fix this? Well, you fix this by understanding that. Once you understand that I'm the owner of the company, but I'm filling the bottom role, you then can start to see what the middle roles are. 
Well, what's the middle role? Well, I'm also dispatching myself, so that's another position that I'm handling. All right, can I do that? Well, I can right now. I can dispatch myself and drive the truck. Okay, I'm good so far. Maybe you're not. Maybe you need to hire a dispatcher. Okay, now you want to build a... You, you, so you, you, where do you want to stay? You want to stay that driver? You're welcome to stay a driver owner. Owner, operator. But stop using terms if you don't understand them. Here's one for you. I run a business. No, you don't. You own a business. You are not running a business. Being A trucking company is not running a business. Because if I come to you and say... What growth have you made? What investments into your business have you made? Not into your trucking company, into your business. Have you hired anyone? Have you moved forward with a brokerage? Have you bought a warehouse? Have you thought about the cross docking and, and seeked out a warehouse? Have you bought another yard to be able to drop trailers in a different state? What business investments have you made to grow your business? Well, none. And if you don't want to, you, you, you don't have to listen. That's good. Okay. But don't bitch and complain about other people when you can hire a salesman yourself. Well, how can we hire a salesman? Do you know what it's like? You, look, I'm going to say the same thing I said to fucking Rob. And I'll play the video. You knew what was against you. You knew you couldn't get customers with a one truck operation. You knew the trucks and everything was too expensive. And yet you still did it. You still went in with no plan. You had no plan. You knew all of the po all of the pushbacks, all of the negatives, all of the fact that it's going to be so hard for me to go ahead and do this. It's going to be so hard for me to get direct customers. It's going to be so hard for me to grow my company. And you still did it with no plan. And then you bitch at everyone else. You had no plan. You had no thought of how to grow. You didn't understand the industry, how it worked, how to progress, how to solve the problems. That's on you. That's on you. Look, I, me and my brother played hockey in Buffalo, New York growing up. My brother was better than me, but he, he, was, he was a little smaller, but he was finesse. So he was a forward, I was a defenseman. But we played higher level hockey, right? So what would happen was people were really good. They would play hockey, and the level that they were at, they were a big fish in a small pond. They thought they were the badasses. Then they'd step up to our level, and they'd get ripped up. They had no idea. It's faster. It's smoother. It's quicker. The decision-making process has to be faster. So, and they learned that they weren't ready. They weren't ready yet. I mean, when we, I, I, was in, I was playing high school, and my brother was in sixth grade playing with high school players. That's, that's, that's how good he was. He, 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 wherever I went, he basically went. So when I was a senior and he was an eighth grader, he played in the summer league with us. But it, it, it's not just about I'm very good down here. I can drive this truck. I, can, I, I know my routes. I know how to work the ELD. And I know how to do this. The next step's not about, it's still trucking, but the decision making is faster. The thought processes have to be quicker. The, the, the decisions you make have to be based on knowledge and intelligence and saying, this is what I'm going to do. Just like when we played hockey. It wasn't the fact that this kid couldn't play hockey. He just couldn't step up to the next level where everything, like I said, is faster it's smoother. We're making faster decisions. We're reacting faster. That's when you realize what somebody's better than somebody else. How fast they were able to make that decision. How well were they able to see the ice? When did they see the open guy? When did, 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 they, did it take them five seconds to make, this, make the pass? 
Or did it make him one, did it take him one second to make the pass? You're now stepping up into the big leagues. But the problem is, is you're not learning the, the processes, the knowledge to be able to make the decisions faster and, and with more authority. When I call Schneider, when I used to call Schneider to haul some freight for me, I'd be like, hey, I got a load going from here to here. And they never asked me how much. They never asked how much. What they did do is say, here's how much. You want us? Here's how much I cost. They didn't argue with me. They didn't go back and forth. They just said, here's how much. Now, when Schneider called me and said, hey, we see you have a load. We got to get we got to get this you know, driver back and stuff like that. And, and they were like, we'll take the load for that. You know, okay, yeah, we'll take it for that. That's different. They needed me. I had value to them. I had value to them, right? They needed my stuff. But when they had value to me, they charged me for that. And, and I think the problem is, like I said, you guys are out there running load board freight, and you have to realize that load board freight might just be extra freight. It's, it might be freight that it, there's no rush to move it. it that's, or there's a load that's got to go right now. Truck fell off. But if it's load board freight is fall off freight, it's fall off freight from contracted freight. Because every time a broker puts it out there, every time a, tro a, a broker puts it on the load board, it, it, it's a dangerous situation for us now. We don't know who's going to take it. We don't know who's going to grab it. We don't know if it's actually a carrier or if it's going to be double brokered. We don't know if the carrier is going to be any good. We don't know if the carrier is not going to deliver it on time. We don't know if the carrier technically is, is properly going to handle it and secure it and make sure it doesn't get damaged because you're not my normal guy. You're not my normal guy. And let me tell you something. Everybody's like, well, if you pay more money, you get better. No, you don't. I have paid a lot of money for shit drivers. In the end, they were a shit driver. They were shit. I paid a lot of money for them. And, and they, they made no phone calls. They didn't check in. They didn't tell me when they were loaded. They didn't send me pictures. They did fucking nothing. And I paid a lot of money for that. I'm not using them again. So money don't just guarantee good service. God, I wish. I fucking wish. You guys pay good money for trucks that come out of the fucking dealership and they're shit. Explain that to me. Explain that to me. There's another one. You guys want broker transparency because you think I'm making too much. You go to a mechanic and the mechanic charges $225 an hour. How much do you think the mechanic's making? 25 bucks? You think he's making 25 bucks an hour? Do you want mechanic tra transparency? Do you think they're being overpaid? Where's your fucking fight with them? It is what it is. They're paying the mechanic 25 bucks, but they also have other shit that they've invested in. Maybe they sent that mechanic to school, to Detroit school. They got other shit they're paying for in that $200. But all you see is that broker made 40% and he used that for his Lamborghini fund. Well, well no. Because technically we're, we, we would like to make 20% profit or 25% to pay the light bill, to pay the taxes, to pay the labor. But some loads we're only going to make 4%. Some loads, we, we, on seven loads, we were only able to make 10%. This is why brokerages are laying off. The percentage in which they have to make to keep the doors open isn't there. So if they can get a good rip on a load, that one load's not going to keep their lights on. Burn a candle, you don't need a light. I don't understand I don't understand. You're welcome to click in if you want me to drop it. I know you, you said some dumb stuff, but I'll listen. 
You see what I'm saying? But nobody wants to hear that. Nobody wants to say, you know what, maybe I should look at my business and actually see the hierarchy and the position that I'm in. Holy shit, I'm, I'm the truck driver. I'm the owner, and I'm the truck driver. No, and that's fine. You're, you're welcome to give brokers a hard time. You should. You should. You should. You should force them to be knowledgeable. Like, if a fucking, I know my loads. But if, a, if you call a broker and they're like, oh, I don't know. Well, go find out, dummy. Go find out if I need straps or chains. Go find out if it needs to be tarped. Go find out if it needs to be, if, if I'm going to sit there for five hours. That's your job. That's your job. I, look, look, I, I know 100%. If you call, this is how I was when I carry. If I call a broker and the broker doesn't know shit about the load, and you can tell they don't know about the load, my price is going to be higher to that broker. Why does that happen? Well, that happens because the, the driver doesn't have any confidence in your knowledge of this load. So they're going to put more money on it to protect themselves, right? You're, instead of doing it for 2000 you might say 2500 because you're going to put an extra $500 on that load because the broker doesn't, is not giving you good confidence that this is going to go well. That's just that's human nature. But if you call me and I'm like, all right, here's what we got. It's first come, first serve on the shipper. We give three hours. So if you need to uh, tack on an hour, do it now. Um, and need straps, no chains, no chains at all. You're going to swing around back on the left side of the building. There's going to be a, a, a door right there. You're going to go in. You're going to, I'm going to send you the bill of lading. And on top of that bill of lading, there's going to be a, a, your, your pickup number. You're going to hold, you're going to have that bill of lading with you. You're going to go inside. You're going to say, I'm loading this one. You're going to come out. They're going to load your truck. You're going to hold that bill of lading because it's going to get, it's going to tell you everything you're supposed to get. As the driver rolls up with the forklift, he's going to yell 10 foot piece of pipe, you know, 10 foot piece of pipe. And you're going to check that off. When you've checked all that off, you're going to go back in. The shipper's going to be come out. He's going to go boom, boom, boom. You're good to go. Then the shipper's going to sign it. Then you can leave. No tarp. Probably going to need 20 straps. Um, that, but that's your call. You can go more, obviously. I wouldn't suggest less. Um, please make sure that these are fiberglass so they're not, they settle and your straps will loosen up. It will loosen up because it's not perfectly round. And it's going to, so it's going to settle. So I'm going to please make sure that you check your straps. When I give you all that information, you're going to say, this motherfucker knows this guy's been here before. This is, this is confidence. He knows his shit, right? Next thing you know, I'm just ca calling shit off. Next thing you're going to say is, all right, I, I could probably do that for, I'll do that for two grand. Okay. I'm not being punished for lack of knowledge. I'm being I, I, I'm actually giving you the information you need to make sure you don't fail, because if you fail, I fail. If I fail, I lose my customer. If and then you just move on and find another broker. But I lose a customer and I might take me six months to find another one. And that's what happens to new brokers. That's what happens. So, so if you if you feel you need to see broker transparency, if you feel you need that to survive, if you feel that that's gonna what's gonna keep the doors open, it's not. Do you know what actually? Because I'm not giving you money just because you know how much is in it. You have to provide me a service. You have to be a value to me. You get paid more when you provide me a better service. Or you have more value. If I can call you and you got one truck, but I need 20 loads, you don't have much value to me. The person that has more value to me is somebody that might have 40 or 50 trucks. Right? It's not about you seeing the load. And the problem is, is if that's what you feel gets you more money, you shouldn't be in business. Because you have no idea what business is. It's not about the money. The money is the last thing I talk about with a customer. Is money. I want to know everything else. And I want them to know everything about me. I want to know how their process works. So I can figure out what's the best way. I can solve their problems. 
can I solve their problems? I don't give a shit about money right now. Can I solve their problems? Do I have enough knowledge in this industry? Do I know what I'm doing? Can I solve their problems? Ooh, that's one right there I can solve. I know how to fix that problem. They're pulling tall shit, and I, I got a big network of mini decks who have 12-inch deck heights, and I can keep the height down. I know guys with perimeter frames, and we can drop that thing right down into that trailer, and I can, I can carry it at 9 inches. I can solve those problems. I now have value to that customer. I now have a value to that customer of solving the problem. The la- I don't ask a customer, hey, how much you bill in your customer on this one? If that's what you need, then you don't deserve to be in business. Sorry, you just don't. You just don't. Because if all you understand about business is money, you're out of your league. You're playing, you're out of your league. You're that, you're that kid in the small pond playing in that lower level of hockey that comes up to the big leagues, gets his ass whooped, figures out he's not fast enough, he's not quick enough, he can't make decisions fast enough, and he's failing. And then what he does is he blames his teammates. You're not passing me the puck. Nobody's, you know, I'm a, I, no, it's because we know when we pass you the puck, you're not going to be able to do shit with it. But I know that guy is. I'm not getting enough ice time because the coach is like, you, you, you're not good enough. We want to win. You're not there yet. You haven't learned. You haven't stepped up to this side. Well, that's where you're at. And and some of you have kids. You you can see it. You can see that if you can see if your kid's out of his league, and you can see when you're when somebody else's kid's out of their league. Business decisions have to be quick and have to be done with confidence and have to be done with knowledge. You want to win customers? Solve their problems. Solve a customer's problem. You solve a customer's problem, they'll remember you. You make make a shipping manager look good, he'll keep giving you loads. But if it's all about the price, if it's all about the money, you're going to fail. You're going to fail. But if that shipping manager says, I need a truck here by 10 o'clock and you got a truck there by 930 and you make him look good to his boss, money don't fucking matter. You got that job done. Down the road, you're starting to learn how to give them prices that they need. You learn how to, and all of a sudden you're giving them prices to make them grow. They're growing with you. They're taking you along. That's how Spectre did it, little bastard. I hope he's listening. Little bastard. Anybody want a snowblower? Yeah, I know. I know. I had to fix that. I had to fix it. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. But this is this is this is what you have to understand. If you're focused on nothing but money, you're never going to get a customer. You're never going to get a customer. I, the best customers are the ones that want me to solve their problems. We'll deal, we'll deal with money later. Can you help us? Can you get this solved? Can you figure something out? Can you make this happen? Yeah, I can make it happen. Let me show you. Let me show you how. Boom, done. Broke. I, I, I don't give a shit if you know. I don't give a shit if you know. Just because if I'm making ten thousand dollars on a load, or I'm building ten thousand dollars on a load, and I'm and seven's the number that it should move for. Somebody will move it for seven. No, you guys think that you're all out there, and other truck drivers are gonna be like, nah. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at ninety five. I'm not gonna undercut that other person. They win. No. No. And then you're going to go to the customer and say, uh, I was going to do it for 95 I should get all the money. And the customer's like, you don't, it, it, this guy's been solving my problems for 14 years. He's been solving my problems for 14 years. 
I have a problem. I call him. He fixes the problem. Can you do that? Well, well, no. Then I don't care. I don't care. I love that one. I've had customers go in there. I mean, carriers go in there and say, oh, we should do this direct. He's like, dude, I've been with this guy for 14 years. I have problems. I call. He answers. It gets done. I, why would I switch? Well, because then you can cut him out and you can lose that money. He's worth that money. I have reached a point that my customer has said he's worth that money. They understand my worth. So if you think that if you think that money's the only thing, some customers it is. Guess what I don't do? Work with those customers. I have had customers that all they give a shit about is money. And I've said, I'm not your guy. I'm not the guy you want to work with. I have turned down customers. I have I, I, a couple customers recently that have reached out. And I'm like, well, here's your price. And, oh, we got something to do it for cheaper. And then this and this and this shows up. And they, when the truck shows up, it's supposed to go on a double drop and a, sh a step deck shows up. You put it on a double drop and it's 14 foot tall. You put it on a step deck and it's 17 foot tall. You can't ship it at 17 foot tall. Then they call me and they're like, hey, can you do it for the same price that the other guy couldn't do it for? No. No, I can't. If I go in there and they're constantly like, well, we want to use you, but your price is too high. Well, you're not my customer. We, we're not a good fit. Me and you are not a good fit. Because I know what it takes to do this. I've got this. We're, we're not a good fit. That's where I'm at. But the customers I do have, I, I, they know my worth. They know if they're paying me $1,000 on this load and, it got, hap and it, it got handled within their budget, they don't give a fuck about you. They don't care about me. The problem got solved. If the problem's not getting solved, they care. But the problem was solved. They don't give a shit. It fit within their budget. They don't care. They know who solved the problem. Me. I found you. Now, how do you solve my problem? Here's, what, how, here's what's your price. Know your price. Find a niche. Find brokers that, are, that, that, that you could benefit them, that you're value to them. You're going to TQL, and you're, in, you're this fucking small fish in this monster fucking ocean, and you're expecting respect. You ain't going to get it. Because there are thousands of fucking fish in the ocean. Thousands. But if you can find a specific broker that has a specific customer, and you can say, hey, how about if I make you look really good to this customer, and I do a fantastic job, and I do this, can, can we build something here? Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. But your job is to seek that out constantly, all the time. I'm, I'm partially retired, right? But when I was doing this, I was constantly seeking out problems to fix. That's what you do. So just because this one didn't work out, business relationships are relationships, not marriages. You don't get alimony when you and a broker break up. All right, you're not getting child support for your truck when you and a broker break up your relationship. It's just a relationship. You try to hold it as long as you possibly can. Sometimes they work for long periods. Sometimes you establish that. Sometimes you find a new relationship and you move the fuck on. Look, I am giving, look, you might not like the way I put shit out. You might not like the way I fucking throw this shit out there. And that's cool. I, I am who I am, right? I'm a blunt, I'm a very humble person. Actually, I'm not. I'm not, right? I'm a dick. I'm a dickhead. People are like, that sage guy is a dickhead. But as long as you know I'm that, if you listen to what I'm saying, not how I'm saying it, this is I, I don't know what more information I can, more knowledge I could put out there. I have no idea. You have people doing shows like Kevin's on YouTube now. NX. I'm trying to get off YouTube, just so you know. So if you follow me on YouTube, you're going to have to start following me on X because YouTube sucks. And I, 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 they're not solving my problems. They're not providing me value. So I'm going to go ahead and leave them. 
just so you guys know. You're going to have to follow me on accident at Sage Outcast. Uh, also, I've got a coffee out there. Check this one out. I'm going to create, I'm creating a new coffee on my, on my coffee website that's going to be called Broker Transparency 49 CFR 371. And we are going to offer broker transparency. Sage, the bathrobe freight broker, is going to offer broker transparency as a coffee. As a coffee. Just so you know. I think that's pretty funny. Listen, what, what else did I want to cover? Let's do this. This is the chart. Understand where you are on your chart. Understand your business. Your business is you are a truck driver and you are the owner. You have nothing in the middle. So if you want to invest in your business and you want to grow your business and you want to be like a bit, then you're going to have to invest in possibly dispatcher, uh, sales rep, somebody to go out and knock on doors, possibly open up a brokerage for fairly cheap, possibly open up a brokerage. If you have good credit, you can get a bond. If you have a bond, you can get a brokerage. You then can technically get set up with a factoring company. Reach out to me. I'll get you set up. You can get set up with a factoring company for your brokerage. You'll get a letter with guaranteed payment. I'm telling you how to do this right now. Once you get the brokerage set up, I'll show you where to go for your bond. It's called Bonding Solutions out of Arizona. You get a bond. Hopefully, you, got, you have to. Have, it's based on your personal credit. Now you have a brokerage. Now it's sitting there. Just sitting there. Don't worry about a load board. Don't worry about anything. Find somebody that could be a sales rep for you. Find someone that you might say, hey, would you like to, would you like to do my brokerage? Would you like to do this? Maybe they're in logistics. Maybe they understand that. Be great to find somebody that's, that's, will, that's what, looking to open up their own. Negotiate a rate with them, whatever the split. Uh, the most split I ever had was 80-20. No, I had 90-10, but that was something different. The, the highest split I ever negotiated with a company as an agent was 80 to me, 20 to the brokerage. Now, you're probably not going to pay that. That was a negotiation uh, with, with me and them. They needed me more than I needed them. I had the leverage. So normal splits between brokerage agent could be 60-40, 70-30, kind of your baseline. Find someone. Now, that's your sales department. They're going to try to promote you and maybe some other carriers you know. If you're an open deck carrier and you're like, I've got a customer, Sage, I'm going to haul, I can haul one of their loads, but I need two more trucks. Can you find me two trucks? Can you recommend me two trucks? I sure the fuck can if they're open deck. Don't call me with van because you, you door swingers are just, you're out of control. I mean, have you seen bonehead shippers or bonehead carriers? You, you door swingers are just out of control. So let's just talk open deck. And you're like, I need two drivers. I'm like, yeah, I know two guys. I'm not going to get in the middle of the load. I'm just going to say, I'm going to call my two guys and be like, hey, this guy's got two loads. You guys in the area? You need freight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, call this guy. Now, if I put somebody on a load and I recommend them and they fuck up for you, they're going to answer to me because I recommended them. That's how I roll. So now you're building your business. This is going to help you get the fuck out of the truck. Now you're building your business. Now you might want to stay in the truck like Spectre does. But you're building your business. Okay? Hopefully they go out and they get a customer. Now you got a couple of you and a couple of buddies are hauling that direct customer's freight. Now he's not going to go to like, I, I don't know, some huge lumber yard or some massive customer and think he's, just find somebody small. Find somebody small, a metal fabrication shop. Something, somebody that might ship out one or two loads a month, three loads a month, and, and snag their freight. Now, you're, now you got that business. All right, perfect. Now you're making some money. You're like, hey, I need a dispatcher. I know a dispatcher. Snorlord's a dispatcher. You, can, uh, you're, you know, that somebody can be like, okay, now, I need, now I'm going to hire internal dispatcher. Well, what about a CFO? You know who my CFO is? Triumph. They handle all that shit. They run all my reports. That's all done by Triumph. So I've outsourced my I've outsourced my CFO to my factoring company. You don't need that. Do you need HR? Eh, probably not. But what are you doing for marketing? Is your trailer wrapped? Are you are you 
are you out there dropping any business cards off to any local, you know, a, a, some type of supplier that m you might use as an outbound load? So maybe we change uh, human resources to marketing. What are you doing for marketing? Right? It, this is how it grows. And then your customer, you find it, you get a customer, and the customer's like, shit, it'd be nice if we could drop some trailers in here. Maybe you can get a couple trailers. Now you're dropping trailers for, for them for, and, and for a little bit of storage money. Maybe not. Maybe just to be able to fucking lock yourself into that customer. You got 20 trailers and 10 trucks. Do you know what you're doing? You're building your business. Your trucking company is building your business. But if you want to sit and worry about uh, brokers are taking too much, you know what I'm going to say to you? You're too fucking lazy to build your business. Brokers are taking too much money and you're too fucking lazy to build your business. Why do you have a business? Why did you do that? It, maybe it's better if you leased on to somebody like Spectre. Maybe that's a better route for you. Because you have more leverage with him. Have you found another carrier to run underneath your MC number? Someone you can trust. You want to tell me I'm taking too much money? I, I'm, I'm, how? You don't even know my fucking worth. You don't know what I do. You haven't learned what I do. How can you tell me I'm taking too much money when you have no idea what I do? And you can't do it. You can't do what I can do. But rather than, this is the best part, rather than say, how the fuck is Sage doing that? Well, let me ask him. I want to do that. You're like, no, I don't want anybody to be able to do that. Are you stupid? Are you dumb? So rather than learn how I did it, how I'm doing it, how you can do it, how you can progress your company, how you can grow and have multiple trucks, how you can get direct customers, you're like, nope, nope, I want the government to come in and stop it all. T t what, what's the mindset of that? What mindset does that bring? I've never had that mindset. If somebody's worth $5 million, I'm like, hmm, interesting. How did he do that? Hey, excuse me, Kevin, Joe, John. Um, I'm blah, blah, blah. My name is Sage, and I've been doing this for a little time, and I've seen that you've, you were able to grow into this size of a company, and... I'm not exactly sure how you do that. Would you have any time uh, that I could come and, and kind of talk to you and, and, and go over this with you? I'd like to know that. I'd like to understand that. I'd like to know the process. How did you get from A to Z? What, what were the 26 steps you took to get through your alphabet? Nope. Not. Nope. It's better if we just shut it all down and give it to the government. Because the government makes outstanding decisions, don't they, everyone? The, the, I, I swear to God, you know what, you know what, this is all fucked up and we need it fixed. Who can we trust? The government. They've done everything else so well, so well that we can say, yep, that's whose hands I want to put it in. Again, like I said, I, I, this guy yells too much. He's yelling at me. He's attacking me. I'm not. I, I'm pissed off at the situation because it's like, why are we following the bad? Why People are walking off the edge of a cliff saying, join me. And everybody's like, okay, off we go. Bling. Off the cliff. And then they're like, it's the cliff's fault. What? Uh, what? All right. Jeff, I'm going to play... Oh, not that one. Jeff, I'm going to play your... Where's Jeff? Jeff, I'm going to play your video if I can find... There it is. Play a little bit of the video. Now, this is Jeff, and even me and Jeff argue sometimes. 
We argue a little bit about highway, which is which is go highway. What's going on? Anything good? Nothing good. Let me play this. This is probably 1940. All right. Listen, if you buy into either one of them. That's D. Like you see it? Should be the very first one yeah. you see now. I'm going to speed this up here. Yeah, I know you're getting old, D. Put on your glasses here. All right. There's Dean. Dean agrees. Just so everybody knows, me and Dean, like I said, me and Dean go back and forth, and uh, we yell at each other and scream at each other to the point that my earpiece went dead and hung up on him. Or maybe my earpiece is like, listen, listen, you've talked to this guy enough. Even my earpiece said, I can't handle this anymore. I can't handle listening to this guy and pushing his vo- his voice in through my earpiece. So my earpiece was even like, fuck this noise. I'm turning off. It, maybe that's what happened, Dean. Maybe it didn't run out of battery power. It just got tired of the ridiculousness, Dean. All right. Let's press play. Because that's where the money's at. It is, you know, anything over that in this, in this environment is uh, low not very, margin. yeah, low profit margin. Right, Dean? I mean, here we go. 250 on, or less, somewhere in there. Because because you can do two hundred mile loads that they're paying the same price for three fifty four hundred mile loads. All right. So basically, what he's saying is that right now short loads are the way to go, right? And and I've said I'm going to say this again. If you're a solo guy that's out there, you're you're they don't want to work with solo guys. Brokers would rather work with bigger carriers, being able to give more freight. So one of the things that they it would be better for you to do would be to sign on to a Specter. Would be to sign on to a Jeff. Um, because now you have more leverage because of the tenure that the company has. Their company has tenure. They've been out there longer. They've got more trucks. Um, they've established themselves through different brokerages. Can he hear you? <laughs> yeah, he's too busy. He's too busy eating ice cream. Look at him. He, he can't even talk. It's got his brain froze. Right? His brain is froze. All right, we're going to go here. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of doubles. Yeah, I mean... I got to go with the extra large keyboard. I'll just say that. This is Sandman. He's actually hauled my freight. He's going to probably haul. He's one of the very few people that I'll work with that's a solo. <laughs> <laughs> Only because I know him. <laughs> oh, look at I'm not blocked. Well, so, I don't know if I'm blocked. What, what's your guys' uh, take on highway? There's a pain in the butt. Well, yeah. All right. So the question is, is what is your take on highway, which is go highway? And this is this is what I'm going to suggest that you do. And I tried to call Jeff, but Jeff didn't answer. Another hey, another uh, company that, that sends yeah. out false data on everybody and it doesn't double check their stuff. You know that's it's a it's a crying shame, right? All right. So listen, if you are on highway and your information on highway is wrong, if you if you are logged in for Go Highway and something is not right and it's and it's not proper information, that's your information. They've pulled it from someplace. All right. So when people are like, oh, we're going to sue because they have the wrong information. They pulled that information from someplace. Now, if they're putting out information that is legitimately false and they know it's false and they're doing it knowing it's false, that's different. But if you can if they can call up and say, where did you get that information? And they say, well, we pulled it from this record. It's right here. It's your job to say, well, that's not correct. What's your email address? And I'll email you the proper information. You're the company. You want to make the corrections to, on highway. It costs me money. The, yeah, these companies are allowed to do this. Well, then that's when a class action lawsuit needs to roll around. And that's, I, that's not. And, I, and I, again, I like Jeff, but the problem is, is that they're not putting this information out without pulling it for some, from someplace. Right, because it's been pulled from some interact insurance, uh, truck stop or DAT or the FMCSA. Something was pulled somewhere. Even if it's the wrong ping, like let's say your trucking company address and you have a let's say you own twenty acres, and your office is all the way to the left, on the corner of the of the of the acreage, and you own 30, 40, 50 acres. Well, the pin when they Google Earth you, is probably going to be in the center of your acreage. They're going to be like, this isn't a fucking office. This is an open field. Well, you're going to have to call them up and say, go to the right, dummy. Look over to the right. You see that building right there? That's my building. The GPS ping from Google Earth is the center of my property. But this building right here is my office. Let me show you the screenshot of, a, of, a, of the Google Earth street view. 
I know it sucks that you have to correct this shit, but it's your company. It's your information, and it's going to be your job to correct it. They didn't purpose. They didn't say, I'm going to go ahead and put this in an open field. All right. Well, what about this? So I was thinking about this today, guys. So in Cascade, knows kind of normal. I, I talked to him earlier. Oh, but, but think about it. So, you know, the, 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 uh, the brokers say, hey. Dean, anytime you think it's dangerous, I'm not going to lie. Are you still in here? Where are you at? Hey, uh, no, you can't hold the load hostage. Okay. But don't they hold our detention and everything else hostage, you know, extra stop pay? Oh, we got to get it approved. But what kind of nonsensical is that? Well, there's no such thing oh. as getting it approved because if, if that broker's have a contract with that shipper, they've already negotiated all of the de the uh, detention time. So there's no getting that approved. Right. Sometimes. Sometimes it, it's not about getting approved. It's, verif it's verification. So what happens is, like, one of my customers has $75 an hour detention, right? So, But I have to, I have to submit it for verification. So what's going to happen is I'm submitting it for verification, um, and then I'm, so I have to send either proof that it was there, either on the paperwork or some type of proof, and I'm sending it off to a department that looks that over and makes sure, because there are companies out there, and I can tell you companies out there. I can give you the name of companies out there. Who's paying me? That... Uh, got in trouble for lying about a bunch of detention and got kicked out of and got kicked out of different brokerages for falsifying detention and got caught. So this is stuff that it, it's going through a verification process with some customers to actually verify that you were the truck on the load. You actually showed up on time. You were actually the one there that did it and that there's some type of verification on their in and out times that you actually got this. Because you will not believe how many how many carriers will submit detention shit, and and it gets lost in in the in the weeds, and then next thing you know, they're paying it out when they shouldn't have. But those bills are in time stamp. It's an excuse, yeah, right? So it is an excuse, right? But aren't they hold? Oh, well, aren't now they we're in trouble. I'm gonna I'm gonna let him in here. I'm gonna let him in here. All right, now I'm coming in. This is me. Say, hey, what's up, baby? You know what you guys are saying is, you say, look, I'm not holding your load hostage. Right. I'm now calling in your credit. I'm canceling your credit. So one of the things that you, obviously you guys can do is you don't have to give me credit. You don't have to give a freight broker credit. Right? You, you just don't. And I've had some people that I'm like, yeah, I'm not giving you any credit. You're going to have to pay COD. You're going to have to prepay. I have no idea, but I'm not going to fucking, I'm not going to be out this money. I'm not doing that. So... It, it, carriers like to say, "Well, I'm holding, I'm holding my, you're holding my load hostage." You can just say, "No, I'm canceling your credit. I've revoked your credit." Now, is it the same thing? Well, it sounds a lot better. If something were to happen, you'd be like, I, "I've revoked your credit," which sounds better: holding the load hostage, or the carrier revoked my credit. For some reason, in the middle of the run, credit was revoked. These are the terms that are important. You need, you want to learn terms like this. I want to get to the so now you got to pay me. So it's all in the wording, if you want to technically handle it. No, actually, to be completely honest, if you cross state lines, that's what Carmack is. You hey, technically... You to Carmack. Where's the part I want to get with Dean? So they just don't. It's, you, it's too much of a risk. It's too much of... Not, not, like, a, not like you, Jeff, but like a solo guy. If you're too much of a risk, you're, you're, you're probably underinsured right now. All right. Here. I'm going to look at Jeff. And Where's I'm gonna say, Dean? Okay to do and, and this is why i think it's the greatest heist ever okay. because i think if you look at if you just look at something simple like sp uh, speed limiters the, the mm -hmm. first per you know i i'm getting being tinged all over the place i might have to cover this with another show i'm gonna cancel this we'll, we'll talk about that later because i'm I got, i'm getting pinged left and right all right that's basically what I, what I kind of wanted to cover. I was going to cover that, but I'll have to do that another time. I just, I just wanted. To, I read that article from uh, from Overdrive, and it's like, it, man, it, it it it's like you don't get it. The problem is, is I will do this again. I challenge anyone that wants to come on my show, or I'll come on their show if they have some type of show, whatever they want, and you tell me why you think your business. Needs broker transparency to succeed. You tell me why. You let me know. Because I'll tell you what, by the time I'm done with that show, by the time I'm done with that conversation, you will realize that it's you that's the problem. Because I'll give you like 17 different ways to succeed. 
And I'm going to be like, are you doing this? Are you doing this? Are you doing this? Have you done any of this? What about this? Have you done this? Have you thought about this? Have you pursued this? And I bet you the answer to all of them is nope. No, I haven't done that. I can't do that. That's, that's one thing he says in this video. And he goes in and he says a bunch of shit. And I'll find the actual section and clip it. Rob says a bunch of shit that, that or I think it was Jeff, that explaining that we all know a single carrier can't get customers because they don't have the capacity. They don't have ca capacity. They don't have the capacity. They don't have this. They don't have that. We, all of those conversations, he'll state all of that. And my response to that is, and yet, with all of those negatives, you still went into that business. Why? If you knew you couldn't get customers, if you knew the brokers are in charge and they're fucking you over, if you knew the FMCSA has all these stupid rules coming up with this and this and this, you knew that you were stuck in this position of, of not being able to grow your company, and you still bought a truck and trailer and went into that business. Who's the moron? You knew all this. You say all this. You go over all this. And yet, you still do it. Insanity. Ow, that hurts. Ow, that hurts. Ow, that hurts. Ow, that hurts. Why don't you stop hitting yourself in the head? I don't know. Ow, that hurts. Ow, that hurts. It's fucking insanity. Ow, that hurts. Hang on. I think I can show you how to not hit yourself in the head. Yeah, I don't want that. Ow, that hurts. Ow, that It's like, what the fuck? <coughs> Seriously. You want broker transparency? Fine, I'll give it to you. Okay. Now everybody knows what to pay in. Guess what? How we handle that? We all bid down. Who's going to do it for cheaper? I'm giving it to the cheapest runner. Now what? Now what do you do? Now you're losing the bid because you're bidding too high. Guess what? That's what happens with customers. But the difference is, is you don't know the price. You don't know how much they're paying. The customer is never going to say, well, we're billing the customer 10 grand for these 10 loads. <coughs> how much, just so you know, what's your bid? No. They're just going to say, bid these 200 mile runs, bid these 150 mile runs. It's going from here to here. What's your bid? $1,000. Too high. $950. $900. Eight fifty, seven fifty, like seven fifty. We'll take that one. What's it matter? Defend your position. Defend your position with your words. God, I wish I would have been there. I wish I would have been there, because I literally would have stood up and said, "Okay, can I have four people stand up, please? Four people that are truck drivers stand up. Let's let's play a game." And I would have did that. I got a $5,000 loan. How much will you do it for? What about you? What about you? What about you? You win. You're out. How did that help you? Well, now I know how much the lane pays. Do you? Are you sure? Are you sure you know how much that lane pays? I bet you don't. Well, it paid, it paid $5,000 last week. Supply and demand. Last week, they needed the material. They were out of material. That truckload that got delivered last week for 5000 that's going to keep them filled of material for the rest of the month. So now the next loads that go is going to be cheaper because that load paid more because it was a hot load that had to get delivered so that the plant wouldn't shut down. They're not going to pay that every week. So now the next load, they only want to pay $3,000. Because they don't want to pay a $5,000 exit by daily rate. So you knew it paid $5,000. Then you come back and say, well, why is it paying cheaper now? I'm not doing it for three. Because it's no longer a supply and demand situation. It's no longer shut the plant down. Welcome to fucking logistics. Do you know that there's times 
that a customer to save five cents a mile will hold the load. Hey, we can ship it Friday, but it's going to cost us $1.75 a mile. Or we can wait till Monday or Tuesday, and the algorithms tell us we can ship it for $1.70 a mile. That customer is going to look at the situation and say, well, we don't need it to get out by Friday. Let's go ahead and hold it until Tuesday. Okay. Because a nickel matters when you're moving 10,000 loads a month. <laughs> Welcome to logistics. It's not as easy as you think. Fast decisions. What's the difference between college football and the pros? And why do some people in college football light it up? Heisman Trophy winners. And then they get to the pros and they're shit. Why? It's because when you step up to the big leagues, it's not, it's, it's the, the, it's the decision-making, the speed in which you make decisions, the, the knowledge in which you have to make the right decisions to push your company the way you want to push your company. I don't know. I got 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 people. I got about a hundred people in here between the platforms, right? Different platforms I got on. Between Twitch and, and StreamYard, I mean, so Twitch and YouTube and, and X. But the people that are putting out the shit info, they'll get two, three, four hundred people in there because it's an echo chamber and it's what they want to hear. Because what I'm saying is hard. It's hard to do this shit. It's hard to understand this shit. It's hard to build a business. But they'd rather sit and hear and, and be a part of the pity party. That is bad. And if you think the government's here to save you, they're not. And if you need broker transparency to succeed, you've already failed. You're already doomed. Go back to the miners. You ain't ready for the big leagues. You ain't ready. Welcome to the Bath Row Bro Freight Broker. Guys are looking for factory. Fr hit me up. Guys are looking for some of the best coffee. Hit me up. You guys are looking for broker transparency 49371.3. I'm now offering that. Next week, my wife's coming on. Let me see. Did I, did I do this button right? No, let's be right back. I don't think I set a button up for her. Uh, next week, my, my wife, I'm going to start having my wife come on for, for some of the shows. No, yeah, it's not. That's be right back. There it is right there. Um, that's, that's what she wanted. To, she took a picture with her. With, with her, I don't know. That's what I've got right now because I don't have a camera. But I do have a mic. She'll come through the Rodecaster. I, I ordered an extension for a headpiece, and I think I can spin one of these monitors so she can take a look at one of the monitors. But that's what it's going to take for trucking. Let's see. Somebody else sent me something. What did you uh, Let me see this. No, not you. Let me see this right here. What is this? How long is this? 36 minutes? What, what are we watching here from Alex? Two hours ago. It seems this. like Mike Johnson is working. The Speaker of the House, the Republican Speaker of the House, the supposed conservative, is working with the Biden administration yeah. to put the priorities of Ukraine above the priorities of the United States and to do something that his own voters don't want him to do. Is, is that true, do you think? Yeah, that's absolutely true, Tucker, because the details of the foreign aid package that we're going to be voting on next week when we go back to Washington, we're reading about the details in the news. Let me tell you something. Not one Republican member of, of our conference that I have spoken to has any idea what is in this foreign aid package that's going to get $60 billion to Ukraine. This is my video update on this Thursday morning, mm -hmm. April the 4th. Yeah. Let's talk about some news and let's uh, start things off oh god i might have to speed him up even faster i'm already at 1.5 and it's too slow for me with the article that everyone is talking about yeah with regards to project ukraine that is and okay. that is the article from politico with the title ukraine is at great risk of its front lines collapsing yeah. according to high-ranking ukrainian officers the military picture is grim and russian generals could find success wherever they decide to focus their upcoming offensive yeah Hang on. I'm but uh, I thought Ukraine was, was winning. That's, that's what they were telling me for two years. Yeah. They were telling me that yeah. the ruble was rubble. Uh, the ruble is rubble. 
Russia was in tatters. Tatters, I tell you. And then when we said they're in tatters, they're just not. You have to understand that Russia thought it was going to finish in a week and we're still going. Right. So it's not that they're in tatters. It's not that they're that they're being attacked and they're ready to completely crumble. It, but if you look at this from a long term aspect and how long this is taking, it's it's definitely doing more. Well, Putin was was sick. He was suffering from from uh, multiple heart conditions, a couple of, of strokes. Yeah. His arm, his arm was shaken. His leg, yeah. his leg was shaken. He, uh, he had a bum knee. Uh, tennis elbow. Yeah. I thought Russia was running out of out of missiles and weapons and ammo and tanks and planes. Well, they are. They're they're, they're using that up. And just last month, they were telling us that the entire the entire Russian Black Sea fleet was kaput, finito, nichevo nada, no more Black Sea fleet. Zelensky destroyed it all. And uh, and now Politico is telling us that Ukraine's front lines are collapsing. At great risk of collapsing, says Politico. What? Let's go ahead. So the problem is, is that the, the information which they're getting, it's very difficult to get some of this information. Debunking misinformation about the Russian Union. We're going to, I'm trying to get um, I'm your host, Josh on. Eckel, one of the co-founders of Project Liberal. And today I am joined by probably one of my top three favorite journalists, um, Dylan Burns. Uh, Dylan Burns is, is, is a guy who's been, spent a lot of time in the last couple of years reporting on the situation in Ukraine after the war broke out in 2022. Uh, he runs a show at DylanBurns.tv. Dylan, thanks for making time for me. And I know we're streaming live to your audience as well. Happy to be here. Happy to be here. I got to say that you're okay, definitely in my top three liberal themed podcasts as well. That's good. Okay, good. I'd say that's probably of like five or six that exist. So we'll say we, we made it eye on the threshold. Um, I, I, I appreciate you making time, man. I, I've um, Obviously, you and I connected our, cross, our paths across many times the last couple of years. And um, I, I think you have done an amazing job of kind of cutting through the bullshit on what's going on in the war in Ukraine. Um, and as you know, as well as I do, Russian propaganda, Russian misinformation is like seeping through our discourse at every level right now. And so I, I personally believe that the work you're doing is incredibly important and incredibly valuable. So that was actually the reason, the thing that I wanted to cover tonight. My hope was that maybe you and I could talk through a handful of like the myths that are floating around. In the yeah, because I'd, I'd rather hear stuff from an actual re journalist like this than than just a guy sitting on a park bench. Ukraine space. I mean, if sure. you're on Twitter anywhere. on so Where's TJ? Where are you, TJ? Are you out there? We'll send him in this stuff and then run it away. You're not even out there. I'm sorry about my space. Social. These things are everywhere. I have a link, TJ. And so I took, I basically took the ones I saw on Twitter and I wrote them all down. Could I, and I wanted to before, before we, before we get into that, I wanted, yeah. I wanted to say something quick because uh, I understand that getting into debunking culture can get quite annoying to be like, oh, I'm going to debunk this. I'm going to debunk that. I'm going to debunk, debunk your mom, your dad, your grandma. I'm going to debunk everything. But uh, it is a lot easier to spread feces on the wall than it is to clean it up. It is Tell me about it. Much easier for me to just say a bunch of completely garbage made up numbers, right? Like that 40% of Project Liberal podcasts end with somebody saying something horribly bigoted. I can just throw that out there. Yep. And then you have to go like, okay, well, I went through all the episodes and I found that only 10% of the podcast end with something bigoted. Ha -ha. Or you'd have to go through and find all these numbers, do that. And so it's a lot more effort to go through it and clean, clean up the mess. But I will say that even though, of course, the misinformation it doesn't dominate in every conversation, there are elected leaders that even fall for it. Yep. Um, I've seen, uh, for example... Yeah, there are elective leaders who have fallen for misinformation. Uh, let's see here. You think we can find one? Hang on. Oh, there's one right there. Here's one. She's a QAnon person. A truther. Example, and I, I hate to go straight for the bottom of the barrel, but Marjorie Taylor Greene going on state TV saying that uh, that the oh, did he just call her name out, TJ? Did he just say the same thing? Let's listen. Ukrainian government is harvesting the organs of babies to pay for yep. the war effort. That is not only conspiracy theory. That is like old blood libel. She she stated that the Ukraine is harvesting baby organs. Oh, fucking TJ, TJ, TJ! Style, weird type of 1920s stuff. Like, it's the, 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 not the type of stuff you, you even hear with the, these conspiracy theories that, yeah. that get into the public facing sphere as much. Maybe right. like adrenochrome is like the closest I can think of that you sometimes hear of. But there were nine elected leaders in our government that voted against the uh, condemning the kidnapping of Ukrainian children. Yeah. Um, nine? Leaders said, you know what? Kidnapping of Ukrainian children is fine. That's not a big deal. That? No, not TJ uh, Bull of the Woods. It's going to be, uh, hang on, let me show you. Hang on. Let's get the right TJ out there. TJ. Let's take a good screenshot here so we all know who we're complaining about. 
Who sent me these links? Let me put this out here. I don't want to get the wrong guy. Bum, 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 bum. Boop. TJ, which is at Darting Uphill. This guy. This guy sent me this link. Well, he didn't send me this link. He sent me this link. But I don't I even don't even need to watch this link because I'm gonna listen to somebody who's actually knowledgeable. Is pretty embarrassing. And there and I don't think that every single one of them is just paid by the Russians. I think that would be a simple solution. I do think even them they doom scroll just like the rest of us. They uh, are no better human beings than the rest of us. They get their brain interceptors hooked on social media just like the rest of them, and it can yeah. hurt them. And even if they're in elected office, they can g come to these failings too. So I do think they're, for the, at least the most popular ones that's spread around, there is some service at at least addressing these questions, addressing, like, hey, I heard about this before. That doesn't yeah. mean you need to give more attention to these series necessarily, but once they've reached a certain point that you have to address them, you got to address them. Right. Yeah, and, and you're, you're, you're damn right. I mean, like, it takes two, three seconds to lie on the internet, and it takes, you know, it could take two, three, four, five days, even more to disprove, disbunk, uh, debunk that. And one of the things that, you know, I, I'd like to frame it, at least for, for, for my audience society is the, the lies that are permeated right now in society surrounding this issue, they're not just social media posts. I mean, these things, as you mentioned, affect legislation. They affect. Exactly. This misinformation and, and stuff that you don't understand or you don't know, or you can't seek out knowledgeable people is a problem human lives on the ground and so spending the time to like come to understand what the truth of the situation is is incredibly important now yeah. especially on this issue so yeah i'm i'm in um and i i wanted to kick us off with the one that's the most timely or at least start with that one because i see this as a likely going to be another escalation in the war and um this to me comes across as completely false intuitively but uh, i don't know if there's any facts on the ground that you want to share so uh, your go. audience knows this probably as well as ours does there was a, a major terrorist attack in Moscow a couple of days ago. Actually, it was what, early last week. Yeah. And what was the death count? Over 170 people, I think, at last check. Correct. 170 people were killed in, in a shooting. They blamed ISIS. 144. In that. 140, okay. Um, I think a lot of people early in that were looking at that and, and, and really concerned about what Putin was going to do to escalate. And obviously, the news has come out and said that uh, the U.S. intelligence warned Putin about it in advance, and they didn't take necessary precautions. So we warned Putin. Precautions. But the narrative that I've heard from Putin's mouth the day after. Here we go. What did Putin say? Was that uh, this ISIS now was established as an ISIS K terrorist attack in Moscow was the Ukrainians had given them a window to escape. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious as to what you've seen about this. How do you address this fact that's so, flying around that Ukraine we, was somehow involved? We were talking about this earlier because there was an update to the story that broke today from an uh, unlikely third party. But there's two main angles to this that I've been trying to hit on the most. The first is who did it? And Immediately once the attack happened, everybody started going out to establish the narrative. And I remember when, when I was speaking at Liberty Con, I, I talked about uh, this briefly, is the idea that immediately once one of these attacks happen or some, some event happens, each government's going to release their footage or whatever they can to angle it towards their interests. And so you cannot come out, and the Ukrainian government says this, Russian government says this, you can't just take any government at face value unless they have sufficient uh, evidence to back it up. Of course, you can judge some governments as less credible than others. Like if one government has a track record of lying consistently about something, you could say their word's probably worth less. If other country has is really credible about something yeah. um say maybe as a third party intermediary or, or some other thing then then maybe you could give them more credibility but at the end of the day uh, if the two countries have interests involved you cannot take them either of them at face value but something that really disturbed me online was just how much everybody else jumped on it started throwing out theory after theory after theory after theory before the bodies were cold but this happens with so many different uh terror attacks and horrific events that i feel like we're getting pretty numb to it but i feel that we need to socially isolate the people that jump on these tragedies right when they happen and start saying, I heard this rumor, and then they cite their source and it's another link on Twitter. I, mm. I don't want to call out anyone directly, Mario Newfall. Ouch. But there are people who, who do that, and it's embarrassing. And those people... I don't want to call out anybody either, uh, TJ. Came out and said, hey, look, this was actually a Chechen soldier. That person is currently in the Ukrainian armed forces on the front line fighting, so it'd be pretty crazy if he somehow made an escape over there, and they had to retract it later because they jumped on it so quick. So the first thing is, when these events happen, these attacks happen, wait, just wait. Wait until all of the evidence settles. You Yeah, just wait. Uh. You will have some preconceived notion in your head about who you think probably did it, from the style of the attack, when it happened, the politics surrounding it. But we've seen ISIS-K embarrass conspiracy theorists back to back. First, it was the terror attack in Iran. And because of the war be between Israel and Hamas, everybody took that attack and put it in their own preconceived notions of the geopolitical struggle that's happening right now and is most present in the media. But ISIS has attacked Iran again and again and again for like the last 10 years. Yeah. And it's been horrific. It's been an awful thing for Iran. But it seems like for all these people who cared so much about that terror attack, they didn't know anything about that history. 
history. And, and th- here's the problem, too. It's like people jump on this and they don't. It's like he says, they don't understand the actual backstory. They don't understand what's actually going on. They just see this headline news and they're like, yep, there it is. CIA did it. It's, it's us. It's this person. It's this person. Hang on. Slow down there. Let's actually th- t- know the backstory. Thank God you guys aren't cops investigating the murder. What if I was a cop investigating your murder and I treated it the same way we treat some of this other shit? You did it. Whoa, 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 whoa. I wasn't even there. Nope. Sorry. You did it. And I just, I stopped at the red light. Nope. You did it. Then as more time passed, I think now it's pretty clear that it was an ISIS terror attack. In fact, one of the suspects related to the bombing, and this was the big story that came from today, told the Iranians that there was a plan to attack Russia and that there, this plan to attack Russia, they then took this warning and gave it to the Russians, the same way the United States gave the warning to the Russians. What's interesting, though, and this is the big news from today, right. is they gave it to them from this interrogation evidence, but we went to them with evidence from um, intercommunications, like uh, intercepted communications. It's the same way we found out that they were going to invade. We have really, really good signals intelligence. And so these are two separate pieces of evidence, two separate sources on two separate of ends of the political spectrum right. uh, on geopolitics, different sides. The Iranians don't have good reason to be our friends. We are not, we, we are not their friends. Uh, I mean, we are not, we're not friendly countries, but we no. came to the same conclusion about this. And the reason we came to the same conclusion about this is because the evidence overwhelmingly points towards that. The evidence overwhelmingly points. You can't jump on something and say, oh, they did it. It's this and this. Dude, I hear this all the time. I hear the craziest shit. It, it, Putin is not a good guy. He's not a good guy. It's not, it, it, Putin is not just saying, well, you know, NATO, NATO is the problem and NATO is moving up and, 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 and that's the problem. Well, I got a question. I got a question. If NATO was the fucking problem and Trump got everybody to pay more into NATO, Trump didn't seem to think NATO was the problem. He got everybody to pay more. He got everybody to invest more, which means more troops, more supplies, more equipment, more shit. Yeah, but he, they didn't. They waited until Putin. They waited until Biden before they invaded. Okay. Oh, Trump can fix it. How can Trump fix it? Trump helped get big NATO bigger and stronger by getting them more money. If you look at the people who did the attack, they're not professionals. If you look at how they're holding the rifle, it looks like they're trying to throw bullets at the people that they're shooting. And you don't see somebody jerk around a gun like this and like do that to to try to throw a bullet at someone unless they've never shot a gun before or they're like an untrained militiaman or they're a terrorist. When you see that ISIS released footage, ISIS claims it through the Amok News Agency. The evidence at this point is pretty overwhelming. And to be quite blunt, this is the style ISIS does terror attacks. This had ISIS written all over it from how the terror attack was done. And so all the evidence points in that direction. There were two countries, one a Russian ally, one a non-Russian ally, that were fulfilling their duty and warning them about this. And so to me, ISIS is the clear candidate, number one, by miles and bounds. If anyone says that it's likely it's anyone else, I think you could disregard them. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying we have yet to see any evidence. And of the cryptocurrency stuff the Russians have brought up or any piece of evidence that they brought up, they have yet to provide anything to substantiate it. Um, Like, for example, uh, when people talked about that— All right, pay attention ride to Ukraine, like they were trying to, re- I think Scott Ritter said they were returning to North or whatever. Uh, originally, they had this picture of a van that they said was the Ukrainian van that they were using to transport back. Uh, it had Belarusian plates. They said it was Ukrainian plates. It was Belarusian. It's just people didn't know that. And so they assumed it was Ukrainian plates. And the Russians have yet to provide any evidence that they were returning to Ukraine. And of the cryptocurrency thing they said, which is that the Ukrainians paid them to do the attack, they have yet to show any of the wallet transactions. They have yet to show any of the stuff that anybody who knows anything about crypto would know that there's some record of when these types of transactions. So when you use crypto, it's it can be tracked, right? It's all open source that type of shit. So when this stuff gets used and they use crypto, crypto, you can see this shit. Actions happen. Um, so for me, that question's already kind of settled. Um, but the second thing, and this is what I think the first question is all about in the first place, is to avoid the horrific scandal that this should be. Is this is an example of the Russian government being warned by two separate parties, one of which is an ally, one of which is not, that there was going to be a terror attack. One of those warnings even said the city that it would happen and even said that it would happen in somewhere. It could happen somewhere like a concert hall, which is where it happened. These are pretty scary warnings, which the Russian government completely disregarded. Putin said three days before the attack that this was just meant to cause discontent within Russia. Uh, This was meant to hurt Russia. And so 
If you take the FSB and you concentrate them all in occupied Ukraine to arrest Ukrainian children tying yellow ribbons to trees, then there's going to be less of them to take on the real terror threats in Russia. Did you understand? Like, we, we information was given. Now, most likely we're listening to this shit. Maybe we should. Maybe we shouldn't. Doesn't matter. Information was given. Russia trying to do terror attacks. And there should be a real scandal here. But because the, it's being fingered at Ukraine and all the directions being, oh, this is just part of the war, it's almost like it's a natural disaster. Now it's being treated like the Russian government, almost like there's nothing they could have done to prevent this, even though they were given warning. They could have concentrated on other real security risks to their nation state. And so I think that a lot of the first conversation is to blur the facts and evidence and on what is true, what isn't true enough, so that people don't get to the second point of the conversation once the first one would reach its natural conclusion. Now that we know who did it, who is at fault for it happening? And a lot of that blame would fall on the Russian government. I mean, just like we talked about that, uh, uh, I think it was the Yuval. So basically he's saying, saying, look, oh, this was happening, this was this. But if the Russian government knew it was going to happen and knew there was a possibility of a consequence and even knew all this stuff and did and took no precautions to stop it. The shooting where the where the parent where the cops had the terrible, terrible response time. I believe it was Uvalde. We have so many. Yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was yeah, where they were waiting outside the, the school and it was a national. Uh, it was a national it was a yeah. national tragedy and it was a scandal and it was rightfully scandalous. They an hour and 20 minutes. Was the, like the response time from the Russian police to get there? <laughs> the guys got away. Uh, in Uvalde's case, the guy was blockaded in the building. That's why they waited. In this case, they were running around shooting everyone, and then they got away all four of them. There's a possibility they could have all gone away and then did another terror attack, yeah. and then another terror, like a spring of terror attacks because of the response time. This should be a scandal, but because the conversation is focused on, oh, this is just part of the war, so therefore it's it's not really in our control. It was the Ukrainians, it's the West that did this. You can't have the natural second conversation that society should have if they want to stop something like this from happening again, which for the love of God, we don't want to see something like this happen again. Yeah, of course. Of course, there is really never appropriate. And who uh, better to against civilians? I, I'm one of the. So I mean, yeah, I, I think that that was my takeaway from a, it was well, at first, a Russian on. All right. Let me pull this up here. Another one. Let me pull this up. He's also debates this, and this is a really good debate here. Justified. So what we got here is we have Destiny and another guy debating, and he's covering this. So it, it, this is another one. But again, TJ drops a link. Then he runs away because he doesn't want to debate this. We're, I'm, I'm losing a little respect, TJ. You throw this out here, and, you, and then you're a no-show. Invasion. Then the United States with the collaboration of NATO and Russia. Second reason. All right, so let me listen to what this guy says. So let me fast. Let me friends that I have spoken to has any idea what is in this foreign aid package? All right. I thought you were at Hodges. Holy shit. I don't know, man. I don't know. I just feel like, like over the past two years, I've been getting played by the collective West leadership, the collective West... Mainstream media, the generals, Milly, Austin. You've been getting played? Why? You talking to him direct? Ben Wallace, Grant Shapps, Macron, Sunak, Trudeau, Pirate Schultz, Ursula. Were they all deceiving us? Was everything they were telling us over the last two years was, was it just all a lie? No, but do you guys have to know absolutely everything? Do you think all information, top secret or not, do you think that they're going to tell all of you, all of us? Do you think all the information that's out there that they're going to give us is going to be the truth? I mean, do you think that every action that they take, every move that they make, sounds like a song, every step you... Oh, boy, let's see what Politico is saying here. Yeah, let's see what Politico is saying. Obviously, Alensky's warnings are part of a broad diplomatic effort to free up yeah. the military aid his forces both so desperately need and have been short of for months. Everything from 155 millimeter artillery shells to Patriot air defense systems and drones. Yeah. But the sad truth is that even if the package is approved, by the U.S. Congress, mm -hmm. a massive resupply may not be enough to prevent a major battlefield upset. Yeah, that's that's always possible. Fucking Christ, look at Vietnam. I just want to make sure I'm still recording. <laughs> I mean, look at Vietnam. Are you telling me that it, it's not possible? <laughs> Every now and then I have to check to make sure I'm recording. Um, let me read that, that sentence once again. Let me read that sentence once oh, again. God, because it's read it again. incredible. But the sad truth yeah. is that even if the package yep. is approved yep. by the U.S. Congress, yep. a massive resupply may not be enough to prevent a major battlefield upset. Correct. Correct. It is very possible that even if we give them all this stuff, they don't use it properly. And, and, and Yes, we went to Vietnam and got our ass whipped in some spots. My people running around fucking barefoot in the woods, eating rice balls. It could happen. Yes, it could. Statement was, it could happen. Even if $61 billion 
is given to Alensky, it may not be enough to prevent a battlefield upset. Yes, because it's not fought with dollar bills, yo. You give the equipment and you hope that, it, it, that you win the battle with that. But if you don't, it's a possibility. Good thing that they're going to loan and let's get the money and not give him the 61 billion, right? It's a good thing that it's going to be a loan. Yeah, these are all loans. This is all loans. They're not just giving him $51 billion. They're okay. selling his shit to him. And you know who's getting jobs because of that? The people making this shit. Us. Just in case there's a major battlefield upset, Alensky can pay back the 61 billion with interest. <laughs> oh boy, yeah. So uh, the 61 billion may not be enough to defeat Russia. I thought, I thought that 61 billion was exactly the amount that was needed to defeat Russia. Now they're telling me that the 61 billion is not going to be enough or may not be enough to defeat Russia. I don't know. I have seen people pay a lot of money for a lot of good players and still lose games. You pay a lot of money for a lot of good football players and baseball players, and you still lose games. It, it should happen. It's a possibility, yes. Is this, are you confused on this? Are you confused on the fact that even if you give them this, it's a possibility they might lose a battle? Even if you give this player a zillion dollars, he might strike the fuck out. A pitcher might, making way less money might strike him out. How much did that football player make from the quarterback of the 49ers who made it all the way to the fucking Super Bowl? Not as much as the other guy. Now, the other guy won, but that fucking 49er quarterback did a hell of a good job. I thought that $61 billion number, that was, that was precisely the amount necessary to defeat the Putin. No, there's no precise fucking amount. So it's a possibility you could lose, no matter what you pay. Now Politico is, they're, they're doubting. They're doubting that even this money is going to be enough. Oh boy, so you know, what is, what is that 61 billion then all about? Why 61 billion? Why all the fuss? I don't know. Over 61 tell billion us. to Ukraine. Tell us why. Please, oh, great one. Tell us why. When 300 billion over two years has not made any difference and has not been. Has not made any difference? They're still fighting. Ukraine is not a part of Russia. You're telling me you don't think it made any difference? A war, a, a, a military action that Russia thought they could do in a week is still going on? You don't think it makes any fucking difference, son? Been enough to defeat Russia. Why 61 billion? Why is 61 billion? I don't know. You seem to be stuck in that number. What, why? Thought to, uh, to be the, the amount to make the difference. Why is Mike Johnson being pressured? To get 61 billion approved. I don't know. Tell us why. Well, three reasons. I think there okay, are three reasons. Okay, thank God. For the 61. Thank God for the 61. Billion. And the first reason yeah. has to do with the grift. Got to keep the grift going. This is going to be one of the last big, big payments that are going to be made to the <sighs> military industrial complex. That is going to be made to, to the political class, to the military class. All right, we're going we're gonna to fucking save this. We're going to see how this ages. I'm going to tag this fucking video. And if there's another payment, we're going to say, what happened? Oh, great one. 10% for the big guy. 10% to the big guy. I love that. 10% to the big guy. I love that. I love that. I love the fact that you think we're sending, we're dropping over dollar bills. We're sticking them on pallets, and everything that, that gets dropped over there is just nothing but money. When they send this money, it's not just sent in dollar bills or pennies and nickels and quarters. It's $61 worth of fucking equipment that somebody in this country made. A little bit here and there for, uh, for the bureaucrats and the kleptocrats. And so the $61 billion is, is the last or maybe one of the last oh, Lord. big uh, paydays for, for the yeah. globalists yeah. and the war machine. Maybe they'll figure out a way to, to steal, to seize the $200, $300 billion in Russian frozen assets. That'll be a big payday. But uh, the $61 billion is, is close to the end of, uh, of the grift. Close to the end of the grift. That 61 is what they need to, to make sure that their refrigerators are full of the right ice cream. So that's one of the reasons for the 61 billion. Okay. Got to keep the grift going. Got to keep yeah. the globalist class well fed. Another reason for the 61 billion yeah. is, uh, is to keep Alensky safe from the banderites. You know, some of that money, some of that 61 billion, not all of it is going to go to the war machine and to the MIC. A little bit Where's of it my fucking keyboard? is uh, going to be siphoned off by the Alensky regime and... Alensky's going to have to keep the Banderites at, uh, at bay. He's going to have to make sure they're, 
they're also well fed so that they don't they don't rise up against uh, Alensky and he can he can live another day he can stay in power another day until he can figure out a way out of this uh, project Ukraine mess yeah. that he has gotten himself into so some of the 61 billion will definitely go to to the powers that be in uh, in Ukraine the West Ukraine the uh, United States has sent sends billions of dollars aid we trying that since Ukraine has become far away Joe Biden administration and US oh, let me put this so you guys know what I'm fucking reading Stop. All right. Uh, Joe Biden administration, Ukraine. When, I'm trying to see what the... Is this here? Right here? Humanitarian aid, 1.6 billion humanity. Okay, so this is what we sent. So at this point, this was February. This was January 2022. We've sent uh, 1.6 in, in humanitarian aid, financial aid, security assistance, total military. Uh, much of the aid has gone towards providing weapon systems, training, and intelligence to Ukraine commanders needed to defend against Russia, which is one of the world's most powerful militaries. Uh, many Western analysts say that the military aid provided by the United States and other allies have played a pivotal role in the Ukraine's defense and counteroffensive against Russia. U.S. and allied leaders considering Russia's invasion of a brutal illegal war and aggression on NATO's frontier. All right, so let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at uh, no, NATO, let's pull up NATO, why NATO expansion, I think this is what I was starting to do, is this the one, mm -mm -mm. let's see, is this the one with the chart, 1995 engagement, no, I guess I have to do this, where's the map I pulled up, uh, uh, let me just go to images, let me go to images, and that should show me a map, all right, is this NATO allies, yeah, what is this one? Mm, I don't need to have you over here, TJ. We already know who you are. We know who you are. All right, so this is Ukraine. All right, so we've got uh, NATO engagement. So we've got Turkey, and they're looking for Ukraine. Now, a couple things to understand, okay? A couple things to understand. Let's talk, let's talk a little bit about the process here. From a logistics point of view, because that's what I do, uh, from a logistics point of view, we're looking at a couple things. Ukraine is a monstrous, monstrous, obviously, breadbasket, over here on this side of the planet, right? Um, and if you're going to go to conflict, if you wanted to go to war, if you wanted to go to any type of conflict in the United States, or you wanted any type of leverage, let's think about this as leverage. You wanted leverage on the United States. Uh, what are the uh, uh, exports of the United States? Major exports, right? Natural gas, propane, oil. We're pumping that shit out. But also food. So if you're over here and you're Egypt and you're stuff like this over here on this side of the planet, not, it's not showing here, but you, you guys, I'm not pulling up a thing. Then you're going to have to realize that we send a ton of food over to, the, to those countries. That's leverage. When it comes to UN votes, when it comes to this, they're basically saying, hey, you know, they give us a lot of food. They support us by, get, you know, by exporting their food to us and we need their food. Now, when inflation rocks up, and I brought somebody on that lived in... Um, Mongolia, uh, a professor, and, and he's writing for the Gateway Pundit and Epoch Times now. He, when inflation goes up, the cost of food, go, food goes up up there, and that affects them, right? If, food, if our inflation's going up, theirs is going up, and they really don't have the room to play, right? They're not rolling in extra dough that they can afford newer, higher prices in food. So higher prices in food cause things like, you know, Civil War type shit, conflicts. Um, aggression by different people like that. Let me see who's over here. There's Toga. Toga, Toga, you're from Turkey, right? Let me drop. Toga can explain what ha what happens. He's from Tur he's from Turkey, I think. Uh, Toga, are you from Turkey? Where are you from, Toga? I can't remember. He'll tell me in a minute. Uh, yeah, he's from, so he's from Turkey. You want a link? Why don't you, why don't you come up here, Togo? Here's a link. What are you doing right now? Man, drop the, jump in the, jump in the chat with me. So, born and raised Turkey. All right, so now you have somebody that went, so, when, and he can answer this. So if we've get, if our inflation goes up and we're moving a lot of food and stuff like that, we have a serious, serious, you have a serious problem over there because that means their food inflation goes up. So one of the things that Russia technically could do with Ukraine is use Ukraine as a leverage point to be able to pull farming and pull, uh, you know, crops and stuff from over there and then be able to use that as a leverage point saying, hey, we now control Ukraine. We can now present you with food and stuff like this, but you're going to have to vote against the United States in different type of U.N. meetings or things like that. 
And that becomes a leverage point, right? This is the stuff that people understand that the importance of Ukraine. Ukraine isn't just, hey, Russia wants it and takes it. It's when, when you start grabbing chess pieces or if you ever play the game Risk, you eventually snag different positions and you get leverage over everything else, right? That's important. You're, you can click into if you want, Togue. I dropped your link for there. And the right, the, the far, far right, right elements of Ukraine and, and other oligarchs and forces in Ukraine that Alensky wants to hold off. And another reason for the $61 billion is for, uh, for Jake Sullivan and for Anthony Blinken and the entire Biden White House campaign staff, which, which has a goal of trying to prevent Ukraine from collapsing at least until November 2024. So their thinking is if we can get $61 billion to Project Ukraine, to the military industrial complex, to Alensky, then maybe, just maybe, we can get Ukraine over the November 2024 hump. And uh, if if Trump wins, and if Ukraine collapses, we can blame it on Trump and the Republic. No, I mean, let's be honest. If Ukraine collapsed just after Trump comes in, we, we people are going to say it was still the Biden administration. They're not going to sell that out, right? So what you basically have to understand when he's like, oh, it's for Blinken, it's for this, it's to keep Ukraine alive in the military-industrial complex. You guys understand that the military-industrial complex is also a good thing, right? You understand that, right? Here it is, because I don't I, I can't get this thing to work. You understand that that the military industrial complex is also a good thing. It allows us to have stealth planes, it allows us to protect our country. It's not all bad. It's not like, oh, we gotta keep this. It keeps our technology out there that other people might not, you know, invade us, attack us. You kind of want that type of buildup. And uh, if if Biden got help it helps us wins in, uh, in November of 2024, well, yeah. we can just forget about Ukraine if it collapses. We can just stop talking about it and dump it on, uh, on the Europeans, <laughs> right? That's, that's uh, one of the, the goals of the 61 billion, at least for uh, Jake and Antony and the Biden DNC Democrat uh, campaign. So uh, what else did, did Politico say in this article? Essentially everything. Hang on. what it was I'm no just like, hang on no 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 see there's i'm putting it on screen now it's this tj tj uh darting uphill um uh, which is oh. sbfttransport.com me and him are friends and he dropped a link in here for me to watch <laughs> okay and so it's not you tj and i said that on here i said it's and i even showed this on my screen it's not this it's not you tj tj it's this tj Oh, okay. Because I'm more, right. I'm more on it. I, thought, I was like, why am I bringing up? Mu- <laughs> yeah, I just thought it was weird. No, was but like, thank what? you for coming in and correcting it. And I didn't know if it was just somebody pretending to be you, so I turned off the mic and said, go ahead and yell it, because I thought they were going to yell the N-word. <laughs> nah, stop. Hey, knew. keep up the good work. We'll talk to you later. Yeah, I'll see you. Thank you, brother. Later, bye. Yeah, there's another TJ on YouTube side that everybody thinks I'm yelling for him now. So that somebody told him and said, hey, Sage is talking about you, and I'm not talking about him. Talk about the other one. Uh, oh, hang on. Sorry, phone ring. Clicking the link now. Come on in, Toga. We're going to talk to somebody from, uh, from actually from Turkey. Who lives in Turkey. We're going to hear, we're gonna hear that side of the story. Now it depends on where Russia will decide to target its strength in an offensive that's expected yeah. to launch this summer in a pre-offensive pummeling stretching from Hotkov and Sumy in the north to Odessa in the south. Russia's missile and drone strikes have widely surged in right. recent... Hang on. Let me grab... It's got to be Toga. All right. Hey, uh, Toga. How's it going, buddy? Uh, can you hear me now? Sorry. Yeah, I can hear you now. You there? All right. All right. Say, so, um, I was trying to set up my audio. I'm doing well. I was just working. Just finished. Literally everything. Today. Let me ask you your opinion. You. Let me ask your opinion why I got you on here. In regards in regards to the um Ukraine and Russia. Since you're from Turkey, since you're from mm-hmm. over there, g- give me your take on all that. Are uh, you guys talking about the food prices, I guess, because I just joined, so I don't know oh, uh, no, what's uh, the general uh, topic, but I just heard yeah, so the part. first thing I was talking about was basically that these guys are, you know, with, with Ukraine, like one of the problems with if they take Ukraine is the fact that there's a ton of food that comes out of there, right? Breadbasket of the 
of the what's that the east. So the last thing you want would we would want Putin in control of any of that, right? Because that's a leverage point because we we obviously don't give a lot of food, but if they start producing food and and holding it or using that as as something better, it it can sway the leverage of that of that whole side of the planet, uh-huh. right? You, agreed. That's right. Okay. So one of the things that we don't want Putin to do is control Ukraine for that subtle fact. And it's also a point and, and agree. And that's just kind of what I started talking about. And is if that t- gains control uh, where now you have more the ability to make get more food or produce more food for people like soldiers and things like that. Right. Because you got to eat or you can use that to, to basically say, hey, Egypt, we want you to vote with us on a U.N., we want you to do this. We're now in, in control of Ukraine. We can provide this food. We can do this. But you got to vote against the United States and vote for us. That's kind of big picture stuff, right? Yeah, it, there, there is a lot of stuff actually talk, uh, to talk about because they started the invasion uh, more than 15 years ago. It's all started on the Crimea. You know, the, uh, the old Turkic area, actually, the Crimea. And then when the Ottoman Empire collapsed, we saw too many different countries out there, actually, or too many different managements, um, included the Soviets. But they never forget the Soviets' goals, and they literally invaded there more than 15 years ago, as I said. I don't remember the date. It's all started like that. We were already know that they're going to um, separate Ukraine as um, Northwest and Southeast. Uh, we were warning the people, whoever living out there, even the businessman uh, by the government side from Turkey. But some people never listen. Some people listen and they change their program, et cetera. And the Ukraine is also um, kind of grain warehouse. And also um, you can see too many winery company out there, even the French French winery companies, almost none of the grapes um, uh, raising up in, in the France or Turkey. Uh, we are using their, um, I mean, their soils. The Chinese companies coming from China uh, to hire some soils out there, I mean, the fields, you know, to do the wines again. Uh, it's a pretty popular place to to produce the wine and grains. And it's literally affected every single prices, if, we, if you're going to talk about the foods in general, because we're giving the grains to the animals right. to eat them, to grow them, right? Yep. It's also affecting the meat prices as well. And it's not just the Europe or the Turkey, because we are the neighbors with them. It's also about the Africa. You can see the African economy. And it's not about like just uh, we can't use the, you know, pandemic's name. I know that we can't say it name, but uh, it's not about just pandemic's economic crisis type of stuff. It, it's just all about the war as well, because the war has its own effect on the food prices. Uh, some people don't realize that. Some people think it's another war, like the Middle East, uh, I don't know, the Afghanistan war or the Iraq war. No, it's it's completely different than that. Right, because it, it, and in regards to Putin, that's, that's not something you want him to control, correct? Mm-hmm. And... It, 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 I don't think people understand. So what is, what is your kind of opinion of, of the whole thing? I, I, I mean, I, there's so many people that are like, hey, Putin's a great guy. He, he's just defend. He's just doing this. And people, you know, it's a, he broke deals and stuff. What being from Turkey, how do you kind of see what, what's your impression of the Putin and the whole Ukraine thing? Actually, especially as a Turkish, it's really hard to explain because. Russians and Ukrainians living in the same apartment in here as refugees. Mm-hmm. Just imagine. They living in peace in here all together. They never have in the word fight or pol- political uh, type of word fights or anything else. You, you're never going to see that because both of them absolutely bought it from this. And as I said, it just started more than 15 years ago. It's, it's not the fresh, fresh start. And the Russians keep blame uh, the Ukrainian side as like feeding the fascist groups, etc. Which is I never heard that before. Right. I have Ukrainian friends, I have Russian friends who are living in the Ukraine, or the uh, the Russia as Ukrainian mm-hmm. or Russian. I mean, back in the time, uh, we have no contact right now, unfortunately. But I keep seeing the people online 
you know, all you know, on the street, in the market. You, you can see them everywhere, right. from Middle East, Ukraine. I mean, they they talk in, with each other as well in English, or you know, uh, in Turkish. Some of them can speak Turkish. You can meet with them. Right. Um, they literally destroyed their lives, civilians' lives, and also Turkey is always trying to sit on the middle. And also, we are in the NATO, the second biggest country. Right. There's... And you have to be careful. <laughs> I mean, you can't too too close with the Ukraine or the Russia either. On the government side, I mean, uh, not as, as a civilian, I don't, uh, I don't hold any type of side, of course, because I want to see end of the war. It, it's rubbish war, like any other wars. But on the government side, um, they can't hold the side. That's why they try to um, keep the peace between two countries. But it's it's not going anywhere because mm -hmm. the Russians are never going to listen. The Russians just send in generals or you know if you politicians, Ukrainians send in the higher generals. Um, but it's turned it into more complicated than that. Yeah, because your your dollar's screwed right now. You guys got tons of inflation, right? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> you want to <laughs> talk about it? Yeah, can, talk about it. Talk about that to four hours. Yeah, talk about. Let the people hear about it. Go ahead. I'll pull it up as you're talking. Oh, it's all right. People are gonna be surprised probably. Uh, end of my verse because first of all, this is the worst time in the republic's history. We set up the republic hundred years ago. Yeah, and we're living in the same same territory almost more than one thousand years. You know, and we saw too many different empires. Not just 1000 uh, the turkish history i'm talking about just this territory you know the anatolia or eastern europe mm -hmm. uh, as as turks and we never saw this type of economic crisis before they kept printing the money and they literally destroyed the economy like they, we lost the empire the ottoman empire because of the economic gain but we are in way more worse conditions right now but people don't realize it because you can find literally everything in the market. People still having the luxury lifestyle, you know, I mean, yeah. some people like, let's say one or 10 person. It's same actually in the United States. You know what I mean? Yeah. The percentage never change. You know, it's never going to affect them. I'm still on the middle somewhere. I'm not poor, but not richer either. You know, right. surprisingly, I'm one of the last samples uh, of the uh, middle class, I guess. Yeah, so <laughs> if you're, you're going to accept the. You're, uh, you're not driving a Lamborghini over there? Is that what you're saying? No Lamborghini? Ferrari? Uh, not for me. No, not for you. <laughs> <laughs> if you're talking about me, no Lamborghinis. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my, yeah, I can't I can't tell my Bugatti's color. Uh, it's transparent. <laughs> yes, because there is no Bugatti, you know? Yeah. Uh, I was using a Clio, just uh, the standard, standard car, you know? Nice. But, yeah, because I just pulled up the thing that says <laughs> Turkish inflation hits 68.5% ahead of the election. Uh, blow to it's ruling official. party. Yeah, that's, what you, that's where you're it, at, brother. It's official one. And end of my verse, you're going you're gonna to be surprised when I'm going to say this. If the yeah. people don't understand the economy, I, I can understand people going to accept it as a rubbish or anything else, but I can explain it as well. I don't see the chat right now, by the way. Oh, okay. If the people going to say any opposite thing, uh, please tell me too, so I, I can explain it. Yeah, I can, uh, I can fix that while you're talking. Go ahead. Actually, despite the fact the Turkish lira should be, I mean, uh, dollar conversion should be like two Turkish lira, three Turkish. That's normal. Actually, we were crying before, uh, back in the time, like in 2012 or 13, it's turned into like two Turkish lira. The normal price was 1.4, 1.7 Turkish lira. But it's turned it into right now 32. It's 32 Turkish lira. It's insane, right? Hang on. It's hang 15 on, hang times on. higher than, hold, than usual. Hold on. It started at what? <laughs> Give me that number. 1.4, 1.7. It was it was like that. That's the normal price. When it's turned it into two Turkish lira, one dollar was equal to Turkish lira. I was like, all right, we screwed up. I'm not going to buy anything from any country because it's turned it into like two times higher. Just imagine how much is that? Yeah. 32. <laughs> it's 32 right now, 16 times higher. But again, people are going to surprise that when I'm going to say this because 
they always criticize me, whoever don't understand the economy. This is yeah. my, uh, I don't want to say profession, but one of my hobbies, the science of economy, since um, many, many years. Your, your, hobby it's still, is, your hobby is the science of economics? What's wrong with you? Are you okay? <laughs> who, who has a no, hobby the, of the okay. science you, you know of me. economics? You guys are nuts. Go ahead. I'm listening. <laughs> You know me more than ten years. You 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 perfect know that. I know I do. We, we've we've known each mind. other through chat pretty long time, but I I, I didn't. I was <laughs> with the fact I knew you were good with economics, but I didn't know you're just like yeah, it's a hobby of mine. It's a hobby. Okay. <laughs> I, I I can't call it as as my profession because I have no diploma on it. You know, okay. and also it's gonna be like being high, bro. Yeah. Uh, that's why I didn't want to say that. I mean, legally, you can say it's without the diploma, but yeah. uh, no, I, I won't do that ethically, you know. But anyways, it's like, it should be like 40, 40 Turkish to write around. And people are going to call me as a nut right now if yeah. they don't understand the economy. That's why I say it. Because if your money more powerful than its value, people are going to buy this stuff from the different countries more and more. And it's going to expand the monetary base or printing the money base again and again. M1, M2, M3, th these are the base, uh, mm -hmm. uh, what, what we're seeing or uh, looking at as data from the central banks around the world. It's same for the Federal Reserve or Turkish Central Bank, doesn't yeah. matter, or European Central, all of them same. M1, M2, M3. You can see the numbers out there, almost two times higher than the official inflation numbers. Right. I mean... Look at the Professor Hanke from the United States. Look at look what he's saying and look the official numbers. It should be at least 40 Turkish threat or 45, but it's 32 now. There is something wrong, right? Because they're pressing on it. They say they never burn in the dollars uh, to make the Turkish threat more valued. They, they say that. I can't say anything officially, legally also, right. but I know what's happening. Not the background, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So what I mean, you think? Let me ask this. So right now, like, like, like give me, give, obviously you've been there your whole life. There. So let's say price of pick something, price of gas or price of something, and and tell me where where you remember. Like I remember gas being ninety nine cents, right? But where uh, y your numbers? Like, what do you remember a price of something being to where it is now? Kind of give a reference. For example. um, the monthly minimum wage in Turkey, it, it's going to be more easier to understand it okay. if I'm going to start like this. Uh, minimum wage in Turkey, monthly minimum wage in Turkey is $500 around, like 17,000 Turkish lira right now. It just increased uh, to two months ago, I guess, or three months ago. So right now, keep increasing right, that. Uh, approximately somebody's making about $500 a 